I welcome to the Sims Matlab. Dr. Kamran Khaja is here. We are going. We are going to start our journey from step one to the residency. So this is USMLE webinar. So we have invited Dr. Gibran, who is a resident in Tidal Health, Salisbury, Maryland, USA, and uh, our guest, Dr. Zawar Asif and Dr. Muhammad Rumer, who has just applied for the match. Thank you so much. So I will be checking if it is working on the YouTube, then we will continue the sessions. Just give me a one minute so that I can testify it. Thank you. Yes, excellent. It's going. So we are on live on the YouTube Sims Mat Prep. So I will introduce myself and then we will continue. My name is Dr. Kamran Khaja and I am a graduate of King Edward Medical University. So I have started a Sims Mat Prep platform. In that platform, you can come and have the free daily sessions on the Zoom meetings. I am uh, teaching USMLE Step 1 MRCP student at this time. We're starting the lab session soon. And in these sessions, you can join from our, our uh, Zoom sessions. This is free and you can join from the live on YouTube. So this platform uh, is totally free at this time and we are not charging for the Zoom meetings and online YouTube sessions. So we will be discussing not only the theory steps, we will be discussing the question and answers regarding the USMLE, lab, MRCP. So my lecture and our other mentors lecture will be not only theory based, it will be exam oriented. Uh, like after the theory, we have the sessions of question and answers. And after that, we discuss about the different MCQs practice in our WhatsApp group and in, in, in our Facebook. So you can follow our Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channel so that you can be notified before the lectures. Thank you so much. So I will hand over to Dr. Muhammad Gibran, who is our chief guest here, to describing all the journey for the USMLE students. And they will be, uh, they, this will be very beneficial. And we will start from the USMLE step one, what are exams and what are pattern and what are the basics techniques, what are resources. And we will go extreme till the residency, till the match process. So stay with us. So we will start it. I will now invite Dr. Muhammad Gibran to continue. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks, every thanks, uh, Dr. Kamran, for uh, introduce uh, for the introduction. It was very nice, and thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to talk to the uh, to the people uh, who are going to start their USMLE journey or who are thinking about starting it. So, uh, I. Uh, I, I I started uh, I came from the same uh, background as well. Like um, I started doing my USMLE and then I popped it towards the residency. So it's a it's a very long marathon and uh, 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 it's a very small steps you need to take to reach the destination. And uh, sometimes uh, it's it's really hard sometimes uh, in the middle of the journey to keep it going. But you have to be resilient. You have to have the uh, humility uh of uh you're going the stress of it and uh eventually uh you will reach the destination you started so uh thank you very much uh dr Palmer again for thank providing you me the opportunity I, I really appreciate dr gibran was one of uh, my close friend and very dedicated student i remember he just uh, got very excellent scores and just uh, got residency and I appreciate your efforts. I appreciate your dedication for the students. And this will be uh, uh, very beneficial for all of the students. So let's continue, Dr. Gibran. Right. So uh, Dr. Gibran is now the resident in the USA doing uh, PG-1 training in internal medicine. Uh, he, he is also a graduate of King Edward Medical University. So we will be now starting. Thank you, Dr. Gibran. All right. So uh, I'll start from uh, from this. Uh, so we'll start uh, how the journey usually starts. Like uh, 
uh, how we get into this journey first you have to make a decision uh, like whether you want to be uh, a doctor in the USA whether you want uh, to be working in the USA in that environment and uh, in that healthcare system and you have to make a decision first uh, that all starts with that that journey because it's a very long commitment it's a very long road it's a very long uh, journey and you need to be committed uh, to it before starting it so uh, the commitment is the first thing you need to have and um, that's how it usually starts so um, uh, i made my decision in my third year of, um, uh, of, of my um, mbbs that i'm going to go towards this journey and um, I always uh, being uh, very uh, strict in my making decision. Like uh, if I'm gonna go towards the journey, I'm gonna neglect all other backup options. But that's not the case with everybody. Everybody has their own approach of deciding uh, where they want to go for. But for me, is uh, is a thing like if you want uh, to go for USMLE, then go for it only, uh, so that you can be more focused and more. Uh, uh, more oriented to the one thing rather than going for the three things and uh, having difficulties in maintaining uh, yourself in all three of them. So uh, the USMLE journey usually starts uh, uh, with the uh, with the step one uh, preparation. Uh, but before the step one, you need to be like ECFMG registered, and you need to register for the uh, ECFMG. And uh, after that. Uh, you can start preparing for the USM the step one back in the time when I took my step one exam it used to be uh, it used to be a three digit score and uh, we have to uh, work extra three to four months uh, just to uh, uh, just to work on our scores to get it better uh, with the evaluation like NBMEs and USALs we used to take so uh, but uh, after that uh, uh, I think uh, two years ago it it went to pass fail and now it's kind of easier in that respect that you don't have to work that much hard on improving the scores but you still need to have the basics uh, uh, of the usmles of the, all the like pathophysiology pharmacology everything the basics come from the usmle step one so if you're going for the step two your basics should be good and uh, the usmle is a, is, a, is a solid foundation that can help you build that so first you need to understand the exam structure like usmle is still eight hour exam with seven blocks each block has 40 mcqs and um, there's one hour of break time allocated so if you uh, are going to do the calculations it will usually go for 90 seconds for each mcqs uh, based on the left the difficulty of the examination and the total expenditure for the usml step one uh, is a uh, first you uh, as i already mentioned that you need to go with the ecmg certification you need to create an ID uh, on the ECFMG website and uh, they charge you $160. And after that, you should start preparing. So your resources, uh, most of the resources are UWorld, first aid is the must. And some people uh, try to incline towards the Anki as well. That's a very good resource. Pathoma is a must and Sketchy. These are a few resources that kind of must. And everyone should have it. Every should, uh, one should work on it. And some other resources that you can use for the USML step one preparation are Boards and Beyond, USML RX, and Emboss. Uh, but it all depends on your choice. But the, the things you need to do the must are UWorld, First Aid, Potoma, and Sketchy. And Boards and Beyond, if you're having any difficulty grabbing, grabbing any, any difficult topic. Or you can go to the Kaplan, because I did Kaplan at that time for uh, pharmacology, for physiology too but it all it all depends on your choice like genetics i did uh for uh kaplan for genetics as well so it all depends uh what are your weaknesses and uh, which things you need to study more you need to uh, explore extra resources for that and the u world these days i think for a year's yearly subscription it's gonna cost you around 559 dollars so um, yeah i would always suggest to go for a year uh, subscription of u world and then you can uh then you can uh, sell it uh, or you can like uh, share it with somebody else after you're done with it so and because uh, there's not that much difference between six months and one year so it's always better to go for the one year one so so the total uh, and after that uh, the exam fee uh, after that after you're done with the study materials and all that the exam fee is around 11.95 dollars and you need to apply for the uh, step one exam through going through the ecfmg website simple procedure uh, you just need to fill an application 
and they will let you know after that you will get the scheduling permit and after getting the scheduling permit you'll be able to go to the prometry website and put it there and have the reservation wherever you want to take it so it's a one day I, exam yes i want to add something dr gibran uh, after yeah. the ecfmd a new update has been happened so for many of the students it's now my intel so actually the same process is happening but it has changed the name ecfmd is has been changed now it is converted into my intel okay so it is very important for all the students who are just applying at this time because I have been uh, receiving many queries for uh, registration. So you should know that after the month of January, they have been accepting the application from my intel. OK, thank you so much. All right. Thank you for giving me the information. I didn't know about I knew like my intel is going to take over. But they are kind of in midway between. They're not like not completely taking it over, but they're still there. Yeah, I'm getting the update from them every day. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, it just that. just started from month of the January, so that uh, this this was a new process. Right? Thank All you. right. So the resources for USMLD Step One we already discussed, like what you can do. So for my my favorite one is the U World, and I think you should rely more on it, and the first aid as well. And in addition to that, you should uh, also go for uh, Patoma, Sketchy, and BNB. So, so the next thing is uh, USML is step two after the step one, because step one is now pass and fail. So the main thing uh, these days that decides the number of interviews, if you, uh, the number of interview based on the scores is the USML is step two, CK, and that's the most, uh, uh, the exam that is most focused uh, you need to be more focused on and you need to prepare hard for because uh, the the two three months you're saving on step one uh, for improvement of score you can spend those two, two to three months in step two ck it's a longer exam than step one uh, one more extra block almost 30, 316 mcqs and uh, it's a nine hour exam with eight blocks and uh, difficulty level uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, it's a little more than the step one as well it's a little more tiring and it usually uh, the best time to take it is around uh, your fourth year to final year of MBBS and uh, for the AMGs it should be like they're usually taken in the four year med school and uh, so the question per block uh, is almost uh, the 40 doesn't exceed 40 but two of the block have 38 MCQs uh, that include uh, one of the abstracts that has three MCQs in it so that the block with the abstracts are like 38 MCQs and the passing score for step two CK. Uh, it used to be two, 209, but uh, two years ago, they bumped it up from 209 to 214. And uh, the average score is like around, uh, around 240 something. So it doesn't matter like if you're scoring average, uh, but getting more score in step two is definitely a plus point if you're applying for a match. Uh, it helps you secure more interviews for sure because that's the only uh, step exam uh, for ECFMG uh, uh, certification uh, that has the score right now because uh, CS is already gone in 2020. Step one is pass and fail. Uh, OET doesn't have a, that much score. It's only at a grading and you need to just pass it. And so step two is the only one that's remaining with the score. And it's kind of the same. Uh, as for expenses, uh, it's kind of same as step one, so and quite the same uh, procedure as well for taking for filling out the application for step two and applying for the exam. Mm -hmm. So this is the total USMLE journey expenditure. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of how much I I spent and uh, and maybe in the uh, it's gonna vary for person to person because everybody has some different expenses. So that's kind of a generalized at how much you're going to spend on the USMLE. So for the registration, we already talked, uh, we need around $165, $160, $165. Uh, step one, uh, you will Q bank is uh, for a year, you have to like $559. Step one fee is $1195. And step two, U world fee is $559. And the exam fee is $20. Then comes the OET, uh, that's $450, but that's Australian USD dollar, Australian dollars, not the American dollars. So an ACMG certification after you're done with all of them and you have the medical 
a degree, like having the MBBS degree, then you can apply for the ATMG certification. And, and ATM certification has a separate pathways. I think the pathways has been, uh, uh, they already updated the pathway for this year that you can go to the website and have a look on it. So it all depends, but uh, whatever pathway you're choosing, you have to, you have to give nine fifteen dollars to get certified with ECMG to get the certificate. Uh, and the visa after that, uh, so the visa, when you uh, when you made the decision, so why I'm saying like why you need to be committed to USMLE when you started is when uh, you're gonna start the USMLE. Uh, I didn't know that uh, the visa application uh, after filling out, it, it gives you a date of a visa appointment a year later. So if you make a decision, about the uh, about going for that track then uh, it's better for you to fill out the ds160 in advance and get the uh, get the interview date and start working on uh, getting the observership that i'm going to talk later how, uh, how you can get the observerships in us and uh, so it's a 185 dollar fee of the visa application that you need to fill out the ds160 there are plenty of videos on youtube you can access that can help you uh, fill out this application and uh, you need to be kind honest in it but you can change the application anytime you just need to uh, remember you just need to pay the fee and get the appointment uh, and anytime later you can change the ds160 and you can retain that uh, that up so so are, so some people whenever like uh, like uh, these days most of the people they use a visa agents uh, because um, that's, that's another way of getting the appointment earlier. Uh, but if you are starting a USMLE journey and you're not gonna end it in like uh, less than six months or one year, so it's better to get prepared for it in advance by uh, having the visa application fee paid and having the appointment earlier before completing your steps and don't need to worry about it. So if you go in hand in hand with all these things, I know that it's really hard, but uh, but it makes the things easier eventually. So then uh, after the visa appointment, uh, you need to book the flight. Uh, I would say book it as soon as possible. You need might need to take multiple uh, flights uh, to get to US uh, in order to get it cheaper. Uh, but it all depends uh, what, are, what are your preferences. Uh, it's usually around 1,000, uh, 1,500, 2,000 return ticket. Uh, and average three months US stay is, a, is like, I mentioned two thousand dollars, but like it, it it varies from person to person. Like, how are you gonna spend it there, and which cities you're going to? Is these cities have good uh, public transport? So, there are a lot of factors that uh, we're gonna talk about, uh, and the traveling expenditures like five hundred dollars uh, that I'm gonna talk about, like which travels, uh, which means of way uh, you can travel in the U.S. and EROS application is an NRMP fee and plus. Which is around five thousand. Like if you're pl uh, applying to almost two hundred programs, that that's how uh, how high it's gonna go. So NRMP NRMP fee is around like seventy five to eighty dollars, and the ERAS application is like around five thousand dollars. The total expenses are gonna go uh, for the first May cycle is around uh, fourteen to fifteen thousand, but it can go as high about twenty thousand dollars as well. It all depends uh, on how you're gonna take this thing. There are certain things that are gonna stay the same, like the step fee registration fee, uh, Q bank fee is gonna stay the same. And, um, but there are things that you can save the money on and there are things you have to, sometimes you have to put more money on. So it all depends on your preferences. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gibran, can you zoom out your screen on uh, our single pages screen? Yes, thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, in, in a single view page. So this will be easy for the students to find it. Yes. Is good? Yes, much better. Thank you. All right. So, so if you can uh, select it by one by one uh, on the below section, so in the uh, left side of this zoom out session, so it will be a one by one picture, so it will be more easy. If you enable All right. Enable the editing and then you can click on this. All right, I'll do it. So you can continue like this if it, it's open. Okay. okay. So is it good now? 
It's fine. You can continue like this. It's, it's no problem. It's okay. Fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yes. That's good. Okay. So uh, let me do it again. Uh, I'll do it again. No problem. Take time. All right. So we will be having the question and answer sessions at the end yeah. of this. So kindly stay with us. So please post all your questions in our chat box. So we will be responding at the end of this session. So we are covering what is USMLE. We are, have discussed what are the steps in USMLE. We have discussed the resources and the structure of SAM in USMLE step one. And we have discussed what is USMLE step two, what are exam structures. And we have discussed the whole expenditures in USMLE journey from the step one till your uh, residency in the USA. So next our uh, process is uh, visa related issues. So now we will be discussing what are the uh, different issues related to visas and, and what is the best time you should apply. So I hand over Dr. Chibran, please continue. And this All right. All right. So the visa related issues. Uh, so this is one of the main issue like people are facing these days, like uh, getting their visa either rejected or uh, it getting delayed, not getting the appointment. So there are multiple issues. So the main one is like the long waiting time for an appointment that I already mentioned. Uh, whenever you're going to make the decision, you need to uh, start working on the DS-160, completing it up, have an appointment for the next year. Uh, so that you don't have to go for the agent travel agents that frequently uh, and uh, because it's always a gamble in that way because either you're gonna get the appointment of your choice uh, so it's better to have the appointment of your choice the next year when you're kind of done with your exams rather than waiting for it the other thing is the fear of rejection uh, so that kind of shatter your confidence whenever you go uh, because uh, whenever you see there uh, there's a because it's kind of wave uh, i've noticed like uh, when there's a wave everybody's getting the rejection from the embassy and uh, uh, so people sometimes go in there with the with the fear that they're going to they want a rejection and kind of shatter their confidence and make some discrepancies between uh, the information they provided in ds160 and the interview uh, they're taking at that time so that is a big thing and that's a big uh, thing your visa can uh, get rejected and sometimes uh, you we're not communicating that well with the visa officer and um, and it's also one of the reason but i don't think so it's that much of a uh, uh, of a strong reason but uh, having the discrepancy is uh, definitely one of them and sometimes uh, they kind of put your uh, uh, your visa in administrative processing it takes some some months uh, so Either after some months they either are gonna accept it or reject it, but uh, it's, it's it's a kind of pain. So and also uh, the most of the reason these days is the rejection due to the lack of strong ties with your country. So that's uh, one of the uh, reason they're providing these days. Uh, so if you don't have any strong ties with your country, I don't know what's the parameter they're they're setting it up for, but uh, uh, whatever the visual issues are, these are some of the common one and uh, with uh, i don't know how you can uh, show to them how strong your ties with your country are uh, but uh, i think the discrepancy is the main thing uh, that can lead to that and uh, what you can do about it is uh, uh, i think sometimes it's luck based uh, uh, if you're having a bad day and if that person that taking your interviews is, is like rejecting everybody then it's kind of a bad day and sometimes people get to the people that always accepting your uh, visa application then it's kind of luck based as well so there are multiple factors in it so and then there is, a, there is uh, i will want to go back in visa related issues and i want to highlight few of the most important points uh, one of them is that you should know that whenever you are applying okay you should take the appointment a uh, one year back okay this is super high important point and you can say this is a super high yield when you are discussing the like topics and you do it again and again this is exactly type of important point okay that point is take the appointment before one year and then uh, you can uh, this is a first step 
And the next step is that when you are applying, it's you don't need to have the job. Okay, when you you get the appointment, but when you go for the interview, you must have some the home uh, strong home ties. Like you must be doing the uh, public job, like public hus in hospital, not in private. Preferred is public and. If even you you are not doing the uh, in public sector job, you should uh, do like show them that I am doing the private job. So tell them I will be back in my home country. Okay. So tell them that you are the strong candidate who can go and visit the U.S. and then come back. Show them that if if any person has uh, uh, like children and he or she is married, this is strong point. If any person who is uh, uh, single and uh, having just uh, like strong ties, and having some uh, like any business, so they uh, and here she can show that I have a business here, and there are some other related uh, home ties that can. Uh, so you can convince them that we have the strong ties here. So on the basis of this home ties, your visa most of the 80 percent of the visa rejection is due to B1, B2 visa rejection is due to a case which is called non-immigrant 214B. Okay, so I repeat, non-immigrant 214B. So what is the this rule? In USA, the non-immigrant 21B rule is that uh, visa rejection is due to you are not able to satisfy the consular because you lack home ties okay you have not a strong point regarding your home ties so it's mean automatically the visa officer will be thinking that you are not eligible for visa so b1 b2 214 b rejection is it's mean you have to tell i will go here it's okay sometimes they do not even see your usml step 3 pack permit sometimes they do not see your observership sometimes just they ask you what's your name what what, what you do and who will sponsor you so third most important point is sponsorship okay third most important is sponsor so show them okay i have a strong background okay my father is businessman whatever I, like i am doing the job i have enough money show them the bank statement so always remember sponsorship must be that person that is having a bank statement okay a proof of the statement that is very important point third super high yield and important point is that you must have the sponsorship okay because you are usml step 3 letter your observership is a sec is a second thing first you should have a strong motive you should have a strong uh, ties at uh, regarding your home and then financial stability these are three very important points okay thank you so much for visa related issues so i will uh, now request dr gibran to continue the next slide all right thank you very much dr kamran for mentioning all of them yeah uh, that's a we can make a long video itself on the visa related issue and uh, we will uh, have the uh, next webinar about this yeah. visa related issues yeah because and uh, inshallah dr yeah. fatish shahzad will be with with us and i will yeah. invite uh, i have talked to dr fatish shahzad sir and uh, he will yeah. be with us and having the detailed discussion about visa related issues inshallah Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, because he's, uh, he's one of the person that uh, we usually approach for when we have the issue going on. But yeah, as he already mentioned, uh, the strong ties, uh, how you can uh, tell them you're having a strong ties. Uh, but even after that, I've seen uh, it going in the wrong way. Uh, Sometime because most of my friends, uh, they got the visa rejected, even though they're doing the job. Uh, uh, but that's kind of sometimes uh, where you, you don't know what's exactly. going to happen. So exactly so so the, the, it's, it's kind of like a long video we can make on it and we can uh, have mm -hmm. some experts on that with us next time so it's just a brief that what can be the possible causes of visa related issue what you can experience during the journey yes yeah, so all right so the next thing is the traveling to us air tickets and uh, and the residence in the us so most of us like uh, i've seen like most of us traveling for this uh, considering me i traveled for the first time to the us like i never been traveled outside my country before 
So it's kind of very hard, uh, like how you're gonna go. So it's always better to have some companion with you. It's always better. Uh, it's better because uh, you have somebody you can uh, you can count on. There's somebody they can count on you, and uh, you can uh, have your expenses been divided into two persons, and that can save you a lot of expenses, and uh, in terms of residence as well, and a lot of things uh, that you need to go, need to go. I need to buy while you're coming here and also uh well you have another person that's doing the same thing as you so you cannot have that much stress as well so uh for traveling to us i would say like when you start your use the journey you should start uh, finding the observer ships in the big cities so uh the big cities uh, in the us are new york and uh, new new jersey and uh, in new york you can go to brooklyn queens uh, uh new jersey city and chicago is one of them and uh, and dallas uh, austin and uh, in texas and uh, yeah in maryland it's baltimore but not that much big so the the perks of going to the big city is that uh, the public transport is there and and you don't have to uh, uh, spend a lot of money on the uber or, or there's a uh, another another public transport companies uh, like uh, so uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money on them. So the better is to go to the big cities that has the good public transport. And um, you need to, uh, uh, so it's better when, you, when you're going to the uh, US for the first time, you have to know wh which cities you're going to, in which dates, you need to map it out. And you need to uh, you need to see like, if you're going to this city, what are the options there? So there are big cities in which there's Apna houses uh, that that's uh, kind of cheap on your pocket, but there are many people living there. So if you're comfortable with that, you can go there and save some money for yourself. And um, Airbnb, if you make the Airbnb reservation uh, like a week within a week or a two day, one two days earlier, it's gonna cost you a lot. So better to make it a month or two months uh, or three months earlier. In US, you have to pay before to get the service. Uh, in Pakistan, we used to get the service first and then we used to pay. That's kind of a thing we do in our country. But in US, always is you have to pay to get the service. So you have to pay in advance. So uh, if you get your visa accepted, then you should start working on this thing as soon as possible. That's what I'm going to advise to you guys. And uh, and while uh, traveling to US, make your luggage as a minimum as possible. And... Uh, only keep with you the necessary things uh, because the interview is gonna be virtual, so you don't need to uh, carry in a lot of suits. Just one or two suits will be enough. And uh, other than that, you mostly be wearing your lab coat and uh, a professional dress. So uh, I would say like keep it as minimum as possible. And uh, everything else uh, you're gonna go like uh, to the Airbnb. They have the utensils. They have. Uh, the stone or oh, everything they have kind of everything there so you don't and the stuff you can buy from the walmart is not that much expensive it's within the limits so you can buy the stuff from here you don't need to buy everything from Pakistan. but uh, but if you're coming here for a long period of time just like a j1 observers uh j1 uh or research workers or the people who are coming here for the residency they can might buy some of the things from uh from pakistan or uh which countries they're coming from because the things kind of uh, like utensils and some other stuff uh, and like clothes are kind of like cheaper there and uh, it's kind of expensive in there so you can buy those things from there and the other thing is to learn cooking to save you some extra bucks because uh, if you're going to order it from uh, some restaurant or it's going to cost you a lot like around 300 400 dollars uh, for a month for no reason uh but you can save a lot on that by cooking it and having some made with you so you can alternate the cooking shifts and that's how we used to do and uh you need a carrier as well when you're coming to the us so uh, what i did uh, i just uh, there was a uh, offer was going on a mint mobile so i just bought it with my friend before coming to us like it cost me around 45 dollars for three months and um, <clears throat> otherwise you have to like pay like around 30 dollars per month so that's kind of an, another thing mm -hmm. and also make sure that uh, you need to enjoy your time in the u.s as well uh, so for that you need to uh, if you're coming uh, for the step checking step three try to get done with this as soon as possible and uh, and after taking that exam uh, 
I would say like go out, enjoy with your buddy and have some fun time. Go out in the culture. Don't miss the events near you. Uh, these are some of the things uh, you're going to remember and uh, uh, go out to the to visit some of the landmarks in that area. So that's going to really help you refresh your mind uh, and makes you help think more about writing your personal statement as well. So so residents in the U uh, US, I usually uh, use the Airbnb most of the time, but you can also use booking.com and Expedia. And for uh, for flights, it depends. You're carrying the entire luggage. Uh, I use the Southwest airline because it gives you the uh, comfort of having carrying the, of carrying the luggage with you, like two bags. Uh, because other 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 airlines, they they kind of charge you more if you're carrying your luggage with you, like two bags. You have to pay like eighty to ninety dollars, sometimes hundred dollars extra just for the luggage. Southwest airlines, uh, I found the best in the term that. It usually includes uh, the charges in it, and still find you. Uh, it's still it's still very cheap. So, and as I already mentioned, make sure that some friend is coming with you. It's always uh, my recommendation to people that never try fly alone. Always find some friend if you can try to because there's always someone coming in to the U.S. at the same time. You just need to connect with them and stay with them. And it's going to save you a lot of money, a lot of stress as well, because it's very hard to live alone in the U.S. So, yeah, the lot of a lot of things are going to go away if you have some companion with you in this journey. So what the U.S.M. Step 3 exam, uh, it's, it's a two day exam. Uh, so you can uh, you can schedule it from your country as well before coming to U.S. And some of the people do apply their visa on the basis of Step 3 and used to get them accepted but these days i don't think so they are accepting this many visas on the basis of step three so uh i, I get my uh, b1 b2 visa on the basis of step three as an emergency appointment that got accepted and uh, i got here and i took my exam here step three so i i would say like whenever you're coming to us when you're planning to come to us try to get done with this exam as soon as possible so it's mostly your baseline knowledge is not that much of a big deal. Uh, the new thing in it is only the CCS cases and a lot of bio, uh, bio styles and ethics. Uh, these are the few things. Uh, for the day one is most likely more or more more of a step one exam. And uh, so, and the day two, it can clear CCS cases, almost 30 on, 13 of them out of uh, 13, the eight are long cases. Uh, of 20 minutes and uh, the five or six are six are uh, uh, are the short cases of 10 minutes each so you can go to ccscases.com that's where i got my ccs cases uh, uh, done and uh, you can nail them all so that's the only new thing and uh, so the perks of step three is uh, uh, if you if you're going to take the step three earlier before applying to the match it, it will include in your usability transcript uh, so you can have uh, H1, you can be a candidate for the H1 uh, program. And because th that's one of the requirement of um, H1 program is to have been done with step three. And some of the program uh, uh, do consider you taking step three before giving you an interview appointment. So, and the other thing is uh, you don't need to worry about if you get matched, then you don't need to worry about taking your assembly step three. Uh, because uh, if you get match uh, and uh, you still uh, need to take your step three, then it will be really hard for you to because you have to take it before the second before starting your third. Uh, after 18 months into your residency, you need to take it, and it's really hard to uh, to manage step three in that uh, in that residency uh, era because it's really hard in the first year. Uh, you don't even get that much of a time so it's, it will be hard for you so it is better to take it as early as possible so so impact the number as i already mentioned it all sometimes impact your number of interviews some people get more interview if they get step three done while the other people they got the kind of same interviews uh if they, they're done with the step three or not so it's kind of in the midway between some people uh think that uh if you're not, uh, you don't have a good score in step two CK, then you can improve on the step three exam. Uh, you can get better score, and uh, you can tell them in their, in your CV, you can mention it uh, that you improved on it, and uh, that can be one of the uh, plus mark as well. Uh, uh, but for me, it's uh, as I've seen in the residency, you just need to pass it. 
there's a no big deal if you're gonna like have very high scores in it or very low scores on it it doesn't it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is you're done with it and uh, uh, you don't need to take another step exam and you don't need to go to another parametric so that's good so the next thing is uh, us clinical uh, experience and observership so as i already mentioned we need to find observerships in the big cities uh, and you need to go into the google maps and uh, sometimes go to the google you can search what are the uh, clinics in that area try to read them out by the emailing them so email is always uh, a preferred way uh, to com communicate in here in the united states uh, you cannot uh, just call them and let them know like I'm coming here. Uh, you need to take me. You know, you need to t email them, and most of the time you're not going to get the uh, response from them uh, because they're busy, and that's very kind of embarrassing and uh, kind of uh, very tiring at uh, as well. Because most of like out of 200, 300 uh, emails you're going to send, you're going to get a response in two or three, or maybe at most ten of them. So most of them they're not going to adjust you, but. Uh, that's how you're going to find it uh, so you can like uh, if you're going to start your journey you need to uh, work on that thing as well that should go in hand in hand with that thing so uh, and on b1 b2 visa you cannot do the hands-on uh, or externship but some program uh, some clinic do let you do the externship is there uh, but you cannot mention it uh, anywhere uh, about uh, uh, about it so uh, and also uh, hospital base is the one uh, you should be looking for uh, first of all go to the programs that uh, do uh, participate in the residency program uh, in the residency so go to their website search them out uh, which uh, uh, which of the uh, department there along the observerships in should fill out the requirement and send them out uh, the mo most of them are usually uh, reject uh, and uh, it's kind of really sad at that point, like they kind of reject, but uh, that's how the case is. Uh, but um, some of them are going to accept you as well. So you should uh, keep on sending the emails. Uh, and uh, and if you get them like in a year advance, because we're going to send them uh, two or three months earlier before coming to US, the most likely you're going to get the rejection. But if you're telling them a year before, it's a very positive chance you're going to get a positive response from them. So. Uh, email I already told be a professional way to conduct and be on time when you when you're going to start the observership it's always be to be on time and try to answer as many questions uh, for the attending as possible they're going to give you a positive uh, rank in their site and uh, they're going to write a very good LOR for you and um, and don't be shy uh, to remind them of the LORs most of them are really busy in their routine, uh, either clinic or hospital, they're really busy in their routine, and you need to remind them because uh, it takes usually five business days after they upload. Because before putting an LOR request from your side to that person on AMC, uh, there's an ERAS application stuff. So uh, where you go, ERAS, you have to make an account at ERAS, and then there is AMC account where you can request an LOR to a physician. That's that's on AMC. So. Uh, after receiving that request, that person uploads that LOR, and it takes five business days to uh, to get that LOR uploaded on your on your CV that you can uh, then assign to the different programs when you're applying for the programs. So always uh, be cognizant of the time uh, frame and uh, try to uh, reach out to them and reminding them of the LOR as soon as possible. And uh, and also try to observe the U.S. healthcare system and writing it down your CV as well. Like what are the things that kind of make it different from the healthcare system you're living in right now? So uh, try to work on it. Try to observe it more and more, and uh, try to learn from it as well. Try don't be shy to ask a question. They don't mind it uh, here asking, and no question is a silly question. You just need to ask it, and uh, that's how uh, it will go here. There are still a lot of points, but it's just a brief. Uh, so I'm giving it, uh, I'm keeping it very brief as well at the moment. So the ERAS application, as I already mentioned, you have to create an account AMC. Then you can uh, assess the ERAS application for that year's match. So you have to create an account AMC. Then there's the ERAS, my ERAS, where you can have your CV. So Residency Explorer is one of the other tools that you can uh, find uh, 
to where you can filter out the program which are IMG friendly, which are not IMG friendly. And you can put your USML scores in it. You can also put your research, your publications in it. And you can filter out the programs that kind of most match you. So uh, that's one of the places uh, you've been working on before applying for the match. And it needs a lot of work. Some people have their own list made up. Uh, you can approach that, but I would also say try to explore it yourself so that you can have better idea which program is uh, what, and uh, and so that when you get gonna get the uh, invitation from them, you'll be more uh, knowledgeable about their uh, program. And uh, it's my choice. Is I submitted my application almost uh, 15 minutes before the deadline. Uh, I just don't want to be uh, people don't want people to be doing that fully foolish thing that I did so um, so it's it's my uh, it's my uh, it's my uh, advice like to all of you like submit almost almost two weeks or 10 days before uh, the deadline so that you don't need to worry about it all the things are, are being done and uh, that's gonna help you uh, in, in getting over the stress because whenever you're gonna get the interview it should not be. Uh, it should start uh, whenever you're done with the submitting your application. You should start working on your uh, on your interviews and should taking it uh, the virtually because most of the time these are virtual interviews and the CV components uh, uh, that's on ERAS. It includes your headshot that you mostly see in the Twitter or any other platform. And the people put that uh, whenever they are applying for the match and the personal statement. That's the kind of main thing. It has many components in it like why you went to the medical school uh what uh what uh, really inspired you to be a doctor and why you choose uh, whatever specialty you're going in why you why you choose that then why you're pro applying to that specific program and uh, and why and there are the question why you should be the uh, the preferable candidate for that and the lor so there's a maximum four lor you can assign to a program and uh, it, it's your choice, whichever LOR you're going to assign them. Uh, if you are applying in multiple specialties, like people applying family medicine, telemedicine, neurology at the same time, so they have multiple LORs, then they can assign the family medicine LOR to the family medicine program in that way. So, and uh, the geographical and setting preference these days, uh, like uh, last year, they have started uh, another thing like geographical and setting preference, where you can choose the area of the research, uh, where is you, where. Uh, sorry, where, where is your uh, geographical and setting preference is uh, really is so uh, it can be Atlantic, uh, Eastern Shore. Most of this area are the one that's IMG friendly. Um, so you can choose that area. You can go to the map. And you can figure that out. But most of the time it's uh, near the Eastern Shore, uh, near the Atlantic area. That's mostly IMG friendly and you can apply to that programs. The medical license, uh, like if you have another country medical license, you can mention in your CV as well, and you can put it there. Your medical education, uh, which med school, and uh, your med school awards, membership in honorary or professional societies. Uh, that's mostly for the for the graduates and um, uh, for for the U.S. medical graduates because they have kind of uh, memberships uh, in there. Like if they're going for uh, gastroenterology so they have american uh, college of gastroenterology uh, american society of gastroenterology they have membership in that american college of cardiology icc and they have sometimes some people have uh, memberships in critical care society as well so that depends on the mostly the american graduates uh, they have memberships in different societies here so they mentioned that thing as well and uh, uh, especially to the programs that they had the, um, that have uh, fellowships in it as well. So also you can mention your postgraduate training in your country if you're done with it already. So and uh, experiences also there is a one impactful experience that you can mention in your CV that kind of changed your course of actions that that changed your life that really impacted your life in a real way. And you can mention publications, your languages, and um, that's how. And ERAS application allows you, if you're applying for internal medicine, uh, they, they let you uh, apply for, uh, signaling for seven programs that going to get signal. And for, my advice is to write a personalized personal statement for the seven programs you're going to uh, signal and do the most research on that programs that are IMG friendly. And uh, so this is how uh, ERAS CV uh, is like component wise and uh, you can get more detail uh, if we're going to make a more video because this is a very wide topic it's just a brief on it and uh, the match fee has three more subdivision there's a nrmp fee 
it's around $75 to $80. USMLE transcript fee or almost $80. That includes your USMLE transcript or step one, two, and three, if you're done with the three. And the match application fee, that depends on the number of programs you're applying to. So up to 10 programs, uh, you can uh, access it from the ECFMG or EROS website as well. So up to 10 programs is $99 each program. And from 11 to 20 programs, like $19 each, and 21, 30 programs, $23 each. And about 31 or more program is $27 each. So I applied around 130 programs, so I have to pay around uh, 34 to $3,300, uh, $3,300 to $3,400 and uh, that's what my count was uh, but uh, you can always apply to more and have more to pay it all depends on you it's on your personal preference uh, but i would say like work on the residency explorer so that you can apply to a limited number of programs with the more positive results so so interviews uh, you should uh, schedule the interviews asap because they have limited spots sometimes uh, for the interview and the slots usually filling up too quickly so whenever you get the interview try to go to the uh, my eras and schedule it as, as soon as possible and uh, work on your communication skills because most of the, these days the interviews are are virtual and i think it's going to get virtual for the next few years and that's one of the way we're getting less interview as compared to amgs because amgs they used to previously travel for taking the interviews so they, they used to cancel the interviews they usually used to take the interviews only in their area so, so us is like really big like there are three different time zones here you can uh, you can have an idea from that so for we are coming aboard so we're coming like 5000 miles away from our country to to us so for us uh, it's it's kind of same everywhere so they have like the same uh, same system going on in every hospital uh, the same milestone you have to cover it's kind of same everywhere so there's a minor differences in every program but it's kind of same for you so there's no kind of regional preference for us in that matter unless your family lives here and uh, you have a little bit of region preference but in that scenario as well you, i don't think so we have that much of a regional preference as compared to amgs so uh we, that's why uh we need uh we got a little number of interviews uh because the amgs are getting now all the virtual interviews selected and they're taking it and uh, we're not getting that much and uh, so but i always say uh, you always need a one interview to get match i myself got three interviews and uh, i i got match and uh, uh, i think uh, it all depends on the luck as well there are multiple factors in it uh, so what i would suggest is uh, have a good virtual setup like a good uh, you should have a good webcam a good microphone uh, that you can buy while coming to us from the marketplace or amazon and uh, you can have a good lighting setup as well and that can help you a lot uh, with broadcasting uh, all of your uh, and the internet for the internet i would say good upload speed because the download speed is the what you're getting on your computer but the what other people are getting or the program is getting on their software is your upload speed so your upload speed should be better i would suggest 30 mbps is the minimum you can get so anything better than that is always preferable and uh, the interviews uh, usually uh, so for the interviews, uh, usually you need to look in the camera, try to stay, try to put the things uh, in the top of your mind rather than putting a sticky, sticky notes all around on the desktop. And uh, try to be using your brain, try to be yourself at the time, try to be honest uh, at that moment, and uh, try to be natural. I, I don't, I, 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 you don't need to fake it. Uh, uh, but sometimes you kind of, do it but uh, most of the time you just can be honest and uh, try to answer the question as honestly as possible uh, i didn't have the research experience in my cv but i did tell them like i didn't have it and i didn't put it there so i just answered them honestly about it and the other thing is uh, uh there are multiple other things that you can do for uh, the interview uh, that can help you out uh, the thing is uh, Preparing with some of your buddies, having some virtual interviews, uh, the mock interviews with your guys uh, and some other people who are taking the interview already, like with the other residents uh, and with other people who are taking interviews uh, from some programs. Uh, they sometimes uh, uh, offer themselves for taking interviews for your mock interviews. So try to take as many as possible so that you cannot be, uh, you should be ready when it's the real day that came. So, and do your best and wait for the match day after that that i would suggest so yeah and uh, so transition to residency i think that's a very big topic itself oh, i uh, sir 
I think we should take a break for five minutes or ten minutes, then we can we can continue from the next. Or we should continue. All What's right. your idea? Yeah. Can we take a break for five to seven minutes? Yeah. Uh, guys, uh, we will be taking a five to seven minutes break, and uh, then we will be continuing to the next. So stay with us. It is super important for the next points. What is the uh, main things in the residencies? And at the last, we will be discussing uh, uh, question answers. So what are your questions? Please post in the chat box so that we can understand your question and we can answer you. Thank you. Stay with us. Just as a five to seven minutes break, we will be back. Thank you. In this meanwhile, uh, please, I will describing what is a Sims mat prep. So let's watch this video so so that you can get the, some understanding uh, that what is Sims mat prep. Okay, so guys, watch this video and do let us. Thank you so much. so thank you so much guys uh, the guys who are watching so there is important question and answer session we stay with us after this we will be having a question answer session with dr gibran dr zwar and also dr umair so post all your questions below so that we can understand all your question and then we will answer one by one okay so I will be also asking the questions, which is very important for all the residents, all the uh, students who are just 
uh, have a make up mind for the USMLE journey. So it will be extensive question answer sessions. Please uh, stay with us. And also you can post your questions in the comment sections. Thank you so much. So I want to highlight here uh, the related issues to the visa. I have described the three points and that I will describe the other main issues related to visas, okay? So in Pakistan, uh, you know that uh, there is visa uh, that is embassy in the Islamabad and also there is consular that is in Karachi, okay? So most of the time, uh, there is a different situation. Sometimes Islamabad is very strict and sometimes Karachi is very strict. Okay. At this time, Karachi is lenient and Islamabad is strict regarding the visa issues. So uh, before you are applying the visa, you should discuss about all the different uh, important things like uh, which is the best, Karachi is the best and Islamabad is the best. And then uh, after this, all the things you should know that uh, what I should talk, okay, which information I should tell, which I should hide. Usually, you should not hide the information. You should tell them the uh, what, what's, what's uh, about your plan. And sometime they will ask you, uh, so they will ask you, okay, where you will live, okay? In USA, when you will go and where you will live. So in this case, you should tell them, I will live here and you should... Uh, tell them the address. So make sure you have the appointment on booking.com or on the other websites and you uh, you can tell them, hey, I have a booking here and then I can uh, go and I can live in uh, at this address, at this area. So it is a good point if you go to booking.com and uh, book the your appointment or you can go to Expedia, you can go to the Airbnb and other websites. But booking.com is uh, beneficial because you can uh, get the refund from here. So it is easy. So for the whole discussion and the visa related issues in next, we will be having a webinar with our senior uh, respected residents and uh, in, from the USA who are very much interested and very much uh, expert in visa related issues. Uh, they have been managing the uh, visas issues of the uh, thousands of the students. So we will invite to that personalities in our webinar. In the next webinar, we will discuss and uh, stay with us. Follow our YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook page so that you can get all the information here. Thank you so much. I invite Dr. Gibran to continue the session. Thank you. OK, so now we are having the question and answer session. So. Uh, I will read the question and now we will answer one by one. Okay. So let me open the questions. So let me open the. Okay, so first question is uh, define the schedule of your course. Actually, we are having the USMLE lecture at this time. So uh, I have been delivering the USMLE lectures, which is on Zoom meetings. So it is free. You can join our session on the Zoom meetings, okay, at 
uh, our Zoom meeting, our YouTube live. So it is no fee for that session. So you can join at any time. Uh, we will be covering USMLE step one series in the four months. We have completed the cardiovascular series uh, and we are doing at this time the endocrine series for, from the USMLE steps. Step one, the high yield first aid book. Okay, I teach from my edited first aid book. I have collected all the very famous and important question banks and all the different uh, resources. So I teach in a, a different way, which is very important. So you don't, you don't need to do all the other resources. It's just enough. So you can join us. It's free from 8 p.m. to 9.30 uh, daily on uh, Zoom meetings or Google Meet on uh, either on the live on YouTube. So to get the link, you can uh, follow our Facebook, Instagram, and uh, WhatsApp channel. So you can get the daily link here. So you can join free. And uh, this is question. Uh, this question was from the Dr. Asma Said. And next we will be discussing about uh, Dr. Ahmed Samid. So nice of you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for your appreciation. Dr. Gibran, it's for you. Uh, Ahmed Said is saying, Jibs, so nice of you. So I think uh, you, you should accept this nice compliment. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, Ziaullah, minimum preparation for USMLE step one. OK, so uh, minimum. Actually, this is a relative question. I think uh, this is relative. Uh, I will invite Dr. Gibran to answer this question. All right, so. Uh, OK, so uh, for the USMLE preparation, I think uh, it depends on person to person. So I've seen uh, where uh, I came from. Some people are really uh, good in this uh, thing. So they, they re require very minimum of time. Like I've seen people doing it within a year, all their steps. One of my friend, uh, Dr. Umer, I think he did all of his steps uh, within a year of one year, all three of them, one, two, and three. And where that owner had me, I, it almost took me uh, almost the same time but me starting in a year earlier. So it all depends from person to person. Some people go with a different pace. Some people go with a faster pace. Some people have different, uh, uh, some people have different uh, things they need to work on. Other people don't have that much things to work on. So they, they their path is kind of straight. So it all depends from person to person. But what I would suggest is that while you're going for the exam, you should make sure that you have a good grasp of the topics uh, you're gonna be on, uh, you've been questioned in the exam. And that's a really main thing. And also there are multiple factors going on in your social uh, and mental health is all, also one of the factors that play some role in it. So what I would suggest is uh, look whatever suits you the best uh, and uh, don't compare yourself to the other people. And you can be yourself, everybody is different. Everybody is different and you need to understand that. And- uh, Okay, thank you. Okay, so our next question uh, from Vika Shabir, do you recommend doing the clinical electives? So our next question is, do you recommend doing the clinical electives from Dr. Vika Shabir? So can you please answer Dr. Gibran? All right. So the question is, do you recommend doing clinical electives versus observership or USC or externship? So can you please elaborate what is all right so what is elective or what is externship so please elaborate these points and what so, is recommendation all right so uh, electives and observerships so observerships are kind of hands off experience you cannot do much you only need to observe and electives is one like you can do some hand on and you can do some uh, so uh, and electives is kind of there are multiple criteria for you to get accepted first thing is a uh, you should be undergraduate. You should not be done with the graduation. You can only do it as a medical student. And uh, some people uh, do it like just after taking the final year exam, they go for the electives as well if they find one, because you need to go outside your country. You need to be absent, uh, have absent for two to three months. So electives are always preferable if you get them. So if you don't get them, then anything is good for you. So electives for me is always preferable, but I didn't get the chance to get them because I didn't know. I, I didn't know about them, but uh, by the time I should have applied for them, it's been, the time has already been gone. 
So, and also for, for you to get the electives, you should have some steps done. Like you should have a step one done, OET done. These days, like people used to take the step two in in, in the fourth year of MBBS. So uh, they, they sometimes have a better chance to get the electives. So electives are always preferable and there are different ways to approach it. I don't know uh, because I didn't do the electives. I'm not a good guy to ask about that, but uh, if, in, if you go for electives versus observership, electives are always preferable. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the detailed answer of this question. So my next question uh, from the Dr. Uzair Gabol, uh, how to use the U word properly? A lot of information. So Dr. Uzair is saying how to use the U word properly. What are the techniques? What do you recommend? So U word, yeah, using the U word properly is a very big thing. Uh, so I would say uh, first, you need to uh, to make sure like uh, what question you're doing what are the things you're making wrong you need to uh, evaluate your thought process like what in the thought process of you uh, answering that question went wrong that lead to the wrong answer so you need to evaluate that like lead, lead to think back uh, to take to take some few steps back and think like what can be done to prevent that wrong thought process into wrong channelization uh, I was kind of average in U world. I've never been that much of a good uh, in U world. My friends used to be really sharp in it, and they were very good thought process. But I sometimes take uh, usually a little extra time. And uh, but the proper way to do it is uh, some people do it before studying. Uh, before for so like for step two, you don't need to study anything. You just need to go to the U world and do it. But for step one, uh, what I used to do, I used to uh, if I'm doing a system or anything. I used to study that topic in, in advance. And then I used to uh, do the U word. So I found it uh, that I should have changed that approach of mine. Uh, I should first do the U word and then go for the system so that I can learn more. If I'm doing mistake, don't be afraid of commit a mistake. And don't be afraid of the percentage of the U word question you're getting right. Because that put an unnecessary stress on you because that's not uh, going to uh, because you can have a 50 or 60 percent of uh, U world questions in the first uh, in the first pass, and you can have a score of 260 rather than you having a score of 70 or 80 percent, and you cannot have a score of 240 to 30. So it really doesn't depend on that thing. The thing is how good you of how good you have done the U world, and and uh, you should mark the question that are really tricky, and the mark the question that you should work on the thought process. And after you're done with the first pass of the U world, after you've done with the first pass of after, especially after the step one with the first state and U world, you're done with that. You should go back do the wrongs. Always make sure you're do, done with the wrongs and the one that a tricky question, and see if you, if your thought process is going in the wrong direction again. What are the blocks you can apply uh, to grasp that knowledge more? Go into the detail on that topic and more. You need to study. Uh, because there are cert uh, it's certain topics that really messes you up. So if you're getting uh, things wrong in that topic again and again, then you need to uh, revisit uh, that topic and you need to go to NB, uh, you, like uh, PubMed. You can use the PubMed. You can research, read different articles. You can go to UpToDate, uh, use Board and Beyond, and uh, multiple different, whatever resources you're going to get. Uh, like if you're having difficulty in understanding the physiology of certain topics, you can always go back and read them in detail so that you don't get them wrong. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gibran, for the detailed explanation about how can uh, we use our resources, basically. And next question is uh, uh, GK. M sites with stethoscope. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you. And next is from the Dr. Mehtab. What's the best score for getting pediatric residency? So asking about actually the best score for pediatric residency. So what will be the answer of this question, Dr. Gibran? So I think yes, you can answer it. I, I will add it at the end. All right. So um for my uh, standpoint of view, I don't think so. Any score is the best score. Uh, this is kind of misconception people have created. You can go to the ECFMG website. There's a graph there. You can see like what's the average score people getting into pediatrics. It's around way around 230 to 240. 
it's always been like that and uh, for me it it depends on your devotion to that uh, to that field you can have 230s you can have 240s and you can go into the surgery you can have 240s and you can go to anything so it all depends uh, where you, what you want to be rather than what your scores really are uh, other than like if your scores are really bad like they went almost near the borderline specifically in step 2 ck that's kind of main step uh, but uh, 230s to 240s that's kind of fine for uh, for even in 220s that's kind of fine because it depends like if you've done enough research on that topic if you've done enough observerships on your topic on that uh, uh observership in pediatrics you have a good exposure of us healthcare system regarding that field of your choice and uh, even minimum number of interviews can get you into that specialty rather than you having a lot of scores and not having the exposure that much exposure of that field that will lead uh, even you're going to have a lot of interviews but you not be having that much uh, easy uh, easy going on that uh, perspective because you're not that much interested in it you just got big scores you just got it superficially done if you're not that much deeply interested into that uh, field it will always be hard for you so for for me uh, it sh it all depends on your interest, and the minimum scores can get you into the specialty of your interest for sure. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gibran, for your detailed answer. So, next qu uh, question is uh, from the Dr. Numan Aslam. From Numan Aslam is asking: Is there any age restriction for the residency? Do they select the candidates? who have done MBBS in more than five years back. So the question of Dr. Numan Aslam is actually is that, is the year of graduation matters the most? And what is the ideal year of graduations? And what will be the best for you? And what will be the conditions if any student is having more than five years of graduation? So all the questions will be covered in this section. Uh, please continue the answer, Dr. Jibran. So, year of graduation is a big thing for sure. It is a big thing, as long as you're explaining the gaps in your uh, like. Most of the people start late, like they're doing their post graduation, so they they have something to fill that gap in. So for them, that's not a big deal. They would prefer a person that have a, some uh, experience of that field previously in their country, like doing two three years. They would prefer that. They would love that specifically the new programs. Uh, but year of graduation, more than five years, it got tricky at some point. Like they would be preferring some, pe some people that are coming right after the, their uh, med school because they have not that much ex exposure of their of the of the healthcare system. So the thought process behind it is uh, if you don't have that much exposure of your healthcare system in your country, because the US healthcare system is entirely different from that. So you don't need to kind of unlearn the things and learn the new stuff. That's the thought process behind it. So that's what they want. Like they want uh, people that are fresh out of their uh, of their of their of their med school that doesn't have that much of a clinical experience in their country, but more of a clinical experience in the U.S. And uh, they don't have to unlearn the stuff. So that's kind of the thought process that goes behind that. Uh, but uh, if uh, if you ask me, uh, year of graduation up to five years, I would say it's okay because I have seen. Even up to 10 years, I've seen that many times people getting meshed. Uh, but that depends on the links as well. Some people who are older graduate, they have more links. They have more friends into the residency, more people to watch them for. People just getting out of the residency, just getting out of the med school. They don't have that much of connection. So it kind of, again, uh, very complex. Like people, uh, like I'm getting out of med school, getting few interviews. Some people who's a very old graduate, he has a lot of friends in the U.S. Uh, of, their, of the same batch. They can vouch for him and he can have more interviews than me so it all depends but i think for me the uh the cap for uh, year of graduation is kind of five within the five years is the best one so it, it varies from people to people but i've seen people even with the cap of 10 year of graduation even with 12 year of graduation uh, getting matched into the residency so yeah i hope uh, it answered the you. question thank you so much uh for the detailed answer dr gibran so our next questions, uh, we will be discussing our next question now. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Noman. Hope you 
I have received your answer. And next question is from Dr. Mujashar Khan. Uh, how did you calculate the 5,000 USD ERAS fee? So there, I already mentioned there are three things in it. There are three things in it. So one is the USML uh, transcript that you have to pay like 80 to $85. I'm not exactly right now. What When I paid it was uh, $80. In uh, when I applied in 2022 for the match of 2023, so it was eighty dollars for the USMLE transcript. The next thing is a uh, is the uh, is the NRMP fee that you have to pay like uh, because uh, you are playing the match through NRMP, uh, so you have to pay like seventy five to eighty dollars to that. Like it's usually one sixty dollars, and then it comes to number of programs you are applying to. So number of programs you're applying to it depends i give you the calculation like for 10 programs one to ten is 99 dollar each then it's 18 dollar each for 11 to 20 to 20 29 is like 23 dollar each and after 30 programs it's 27 dollars each doesn't matter how many programs you're going to apply to. so it all depends number of programs you're applying to if you're applying to almost 400 programs it's going to be five thousand dollars combining that and if you're applying to just like i applied for like 130 programs it was 32 to 3300 dollars so it all depends number of programs you're applying to. Okay. And it is it is mentioned on the ERAS website. Exactly. So it's relative. Actually, it's relative. It's depend upon how much. Actually, the key point is either you are applying for 100 program or 120 program. The average students uh, who are applying, they apply most likely 120, 150, 140 like this. Okay. So you can also apply in a wide range, like 150, or you can also apply just in uh, 50, 60, or 70 program. So it depends upon you, OK? Thank you so much. OK, so our next is next question is from uh, Free Fire Lover. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Are the elective necessary? So uh, also elaborate these questions. So I don't think so. It's necessary at all. Uh, electives uh, it's just what kind of uh, experience. So they're kind of hands-on experience, which comes in terms of research and uh, doing uh, electives and uh, hands-off in terms of observership and shadowing. So it doesn't. It's not necessary at all. You can have uh, the observership, even the observership done in the U.S. in in, in your home country and get the award from your country and apply for the match. So it's not kind of necessary at all. But uh, what way more is uh, is your uh, clinical experience in US. So whatever uh, whatever the opportunity you're going to get, like I already said, it's preferable if you can get it. But if you don't get it, then whatever you're getting is enough. And I already mentioned hospital-based is the one you should be going for because it has better US healthcare system exposure than doing it in the clinics. So, but it also depends if you're going for the primary care or family medicine, then going for the clinic one is better for you. I hope okay, that answers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our next question is um, Dr. Muhammad Azan. Secondly, what should be your advice for the student of second year? Mean, uh, should they have a specific st study strategy for those who are going to do it in third year? So yeah, for people who want to do it in third year, uh, they should. Uh, I think they should start working on the first aid at that time because uh, uh, the thing that you are studying in, in second year is like uh, embryology, and you're also studying uh, 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 pathology, pathophys, uh, not path, uh, not pathology or pathophysiology, but your anatomy, physiology, and these topics you should at least cover it. Uh, from the first aid and at least do the even if you can if you can sometimes get the offline you won't try to do it although that's kind of a, so if if you can uh, but it all if you want to take in step three in uh, step one in third year you should make sure you have the step one you world uh, in in the by the end of the st uh, step uh, by the end of second year of MBBS and start working on it. The more question you do it, the better it is for you. And as it is pass fail, so you only need 196 uh, three digit score to get it passed. And I think you can pass it as long as you're committed to it. So it depends on your commitment as well. So you have to plan it. It's very feasible these days. People are doing it now and then in their third year of MBBS step three. So 
I, I, I always advise, it's always advisable, but uh, they have to kind of limit themselves because step, second year itself is, is one of the most uh, uh, hard, uh, I would say most uh, uh, tough year of my med school, I would say the most tough year of my med school was second year. Uh, but you have to be really committed if you're going to start in second year. But I've seen people these days doing it very now and then. So you can do it. We just need to start earlier than other people. That's it. Nothing okay, special. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So our next question is uh, from the Dr. Ali Javed. Kindly answer about study resources for students in abroad. A student is asking, what will be study resources if not living in Pakistan? Actually, study resources are the same if you are living in Pakistan or outside. So Dr. Gibran will elaborate on study resources. I think study resources kind of same. Uh, first aid is kind of same. You can get it like everywhere. For step one, you need us the first aid for sure. U word is kind of same. And uh, the other thing is Pathoma. You can get it like on the website. Uh, there are certain websites you can get that from there as well. But Oma is a PDF, or if you get the hard copy, you can get it from anywhere in your country as well. You can uh, order it from Amazon as well. And the other thing is sketchy. Uh, you can either buy a subscription or you can have it lent from one of your friends if they are using sketchy as well. So you can do it com uh, in combination with some of your friends as well. So boards and beyond the same way. I think uh, most of the resources, you can have them uh where it doesn't matter where you are where it doesn't matter where you are because it's the same thing uh, uh and every, anywhere in the world is the same resources and you can get them uh, and they are preferable yeah okay so uh, i want to highlight a few of the points about the resources actually uh, many of students are considering that uh, this is a very difficult and uh, this is now after uh, the pass fail entry because of this was a very great initiative. Uh, you don't need to add that type of complex preparation for USMLE step one, but still USMLE step two a little bit difficult as compared to as USMLE step one. USMLE step one is now easy as compared to uh, previous system scoring system. So, uh, so uh, we are having a daily sessions on free zoom meeting sessions are on live on youtube you can enjoy it so in the first aid uh, i have my edited first aid i have added my uh, collections of uh, different high yield resources from different question banks and from the up to date and from different so i have added uh, all these information in my edited first aid book and from adding the extra white pages after this book so I teach from the high yield resources. So after my lecture, you don't need to go uh, to discuss or to do the other things. So it is a one thing in a one lecture, you will cover all the theory of the topics. You will cover all the explanation. You will cover all the uh, questions that is coming. And you will also uh, we will also be covering uh, what are the strategies and what are the different techniques and what are differential diagnosis so it is a complete lecture so you can enjoy it on live sessions it is free so whatsapp us so we can share the link here and then uh, there are students who are asking about is there other resources in abroad so in pakistan in the live it is same there is no difference the first aid is like a bible bible for the usml journey you can start with this okay the first book for your USMLE journey is the first aid book. Okay, thank you so much. Now our next question is uh, from our next question is uh, Dr. R K. Uh, so no, our next question is Dr. Asan Jamshed. Dr. Asan Jamshed is saying. I want to know about alternative pathway of residency in which specialties it is applicable. So Dr. Gibran, the question is, I want to know about alternative pathway of residency and in which specialties it is applicable. So it is a broad, actually the answer of this is relative. Uh, I think it is out of this domain, but I will highlight few of the concepts. And then I will uh, also be discussed with Dr. Gibran. 
okay the uh, question is alternative pathway of residency in u.s system there is a system that is called ecfmg certification or now it is called my inter okay so any resident who is going and do uh, an any like person who is uh, going for residency a specialty he must have a certification that is previously called ecfmg certification okay and for that certification we need the usmle steps to enter in the residency okay and so in the us system if you have to go for your own like in supra specialty or specialty you have to be an img which is called international medical graduate okay and after that you can enter in the us healthcare system if you are us resident you don't need to do these uh, other stuff which are outside of the usmle steps okay there are few of the changes we will not be discussing here but all the students who are either in us or in out of the us they are going to do uh, to certify for the next speciality and alternative pathway will be depending upon your speciality and your graduation your fellowship let's suppose if you have australian fellowship if you have uk fellowship if you have pakistan fellowship so there are a few of these pathway that can give you a uh, like one year course of fellowship in supra specialties in usa okay but they are not offering you without the usmle like uh, a specific one residency like you are starting the internal medicine residency i think this is my point of view uh, i will rest uh, request dr gibran to elaborate the uh, this question the uh, answer of this question i think you already kind of summed up uh, all of the things very good so it's a very vast domain for sure it's a vast domain I think I was going up with you uh, last year uh, before starting my residency that what are the options uh, we can get into the US healthcare system. So, yes. yeah, I think you know it way better than me and uh, you can explain it yes. better. There are other other pathways, but this is very difficult stuff. Difficult yeah, very step. difficult. Yeah. So, so there I think are the pathways, only one is the, but it is yeah. a new domain and uh, I don't want to discuss here because majority of the students want to go for USMLE pathway. But you, if you are a resident uh, already in UK, already already in Australia, if uh, uh, like in other countries, so there are some exemptions and there are some things that you can do. But from Pakistan, uh, after you are FCPS, after you are like assistant professors, associate professors, and professors and other of the senior registrars are applying for uh, US supra specialty programs like many of students in aesthetic many of the uh, professors in aesthetics are doing some hair transplant uh, diplomas so diploma world is very important can be happen from the usa but there are uh, for if you are wanting residency without uh, doing the usmle steps i think uh, if i can answer this this is like a impossible or uh, you cannot have this if it is existence of this process so you mean you are bypassing the my intel you are bypassing the ecfmg so i don't think according to my knowledge this will be the right option uh, yeah. if there is other way if you got the visa permit a work permit okay because many of the uh, us states are uh, telling you are uh, sponsoring your visa okay so you must be have but this is other type of you cannot start the residency okay you can have the job here okay job and work permit is a different thing but you want to go like in a specialty program or residency program that is a different thing okay i think it is now clarified okay our next question from okay next question is from dr F free fire lover the answer thank you so much sir so it's thank you dr gibran a thank you came for you from the okay, free fire so next is question from dr ali javed study resources mean if a student like me studying in Kyrgyzstan and have to start from scratch okay i will answer and then i will invite dr gibran now so i have we have discussed this uh, question and already but i will elaborate on this study resources if you are from the 
Kyrgyzstan, if you are sitting in Pakistan, if you are sitting in USA, UK, Australia, or any other, other country, start from first aid book. It is a Bible of USMLE journey. Understand. But it is very difficult to understand the first aid book. It is very, very dry. Uh, first aid book, when one line is written, it is, uh, you can say that there is maximum of 20 questions in one line. So when you are reading, okay, make some pictures, okay, without any background knowledge, you cannot memorize the first aid, okay. This will be a feeling that I know this topic, but when you will do the question, you will understand, oh, this is a new word in this, okay. So first aid combined with a high yield Q-Banks. Q-Banks is telling you the one topic written in the first aid in an elaborative form, okay. So like there are many resources like you world like embos rx and other other resources so you do the question bank and in these question bank there is elaboration of the concept let's suppose the pericarditis is given in your first aid book you read in just four or five lines written in the first aid book but it's, these are the five lines is very are very important so there will more than 10 or 15 question in question bank that coming from this. So understand the first aid first and then add Q banks or high yield lectures resources. Okay. If you are very uh, interested in lectures, if you some of the students have a more listening power, they can listen the lecture and, and then understand it. So we can join our sessions. Just you need to listen our lectures. We are covering the all of the question banks and the resources and all the theory exams okay so it is super easy you can join it so either you are from kyrgyzstan it's okay you can join it it's super easy start from the first date okay so join our all the social media so that we having the webinars and seminars and the tips about usml exams and we will be discussing more and more thank you next question uh, from the dr rk rk is asking should we do the resources like BNB videos first and shift to the U world right away? So what will be your answer, Dr. Gibran? So for the BNB videos, uh, I mostly did the Kaplan because uh, BNB just came late and uh, I think it's great, uh, but it will give you false positive results because BNB video for me, that's not that much extensive at all that not give you the core concept, that will only give you the information that will keep your answers right in the U world. But when the situation stem gonna come change in the actual exam, you might gonna have some difficulties there. So BNB is good and bad in the same sense. It's gonna give you a good grasp of the first aid and U world, you're gonna perform better in both of them. Uh, by the same time, it's gonna give you some false, because it's not that much detail. Uh, what I always used to do, I used to go in detail of the topics. Uh, so for, for that, you need to go into big books that I would advise because you need to do it. If you do it good, you only do it to need to do it once if you have enough grasp of the concept. But BNB is, is a very volatile lecture itself. But uh, it will give you false positive results in the first aid. People use it, still use it. It's a very better, one of the better tool if you want to take your exam within Days. and it helps with the exam as well to some extent but uh, but for my preference i don't like that much pnb but people do like it and people do get benefit from it so it's, it's a personal preference okay thank you uh, so the, actually the keyword is that it's personal preference okay there is nothing best and nothing wrong it's relative okay every person is different uh, regarding if if i will talk myself i like the listening okay so there are other people who love the reading, okay? So one student is listener, one student is reader, and one student is one student is mixer. So remember, understand yourself first. You are a reader or you are a listener. If you are a listener, go for the lectures, okay? And you will find enough of ample of medical knowledge here on the YouTube, on the BNB and Bose and the USMLE RX and other stuff, okay? It's best uh, choose that is best for you okay understand your niche okay, you are a listener you are a reader you are a mixer and then you will start the lecture okay and the dr gibran has discussed the most important point that is extensive when you are starting from scratch you need extensive knowledge 
because many of the students who lack basic skills basic knowledge okay mean when uh, many students let's go starting from the third year medical preparation from the fourth year fifth year they have some uh, like quick fresh knowledge and they can understand and it's okay but many of students who have graduated uh, freshly or just one or two year graduation gap so they lack the basics because basics is a one thing this is very very problematic for that graduates who are old graduates who have just uh, like passed the like uh, mbbs and then did internship or 12 month house job and then they have a gap of one year so they will be finding very difficulty for the basics they of course need lectures okay to making a basic understandings a one student who is just entered in third year medical school and then he, uh, that student can have a high yield base series a high yield quick lectures because his knowledge is fresh but of course if he thinks or she thinks that i can listen the lectures then uh, he or she should go okay so it's depending upon you the keyword or key summary is that is relativity it's according to you understand yourself and uh, make all or use all the resources according to your niche thank you so much and our next question is uh, from our talha talha daud talha daud is asking i am a first year student is there anything i need to know in first year of better cv of usmle congratulation first of all i this is a one salute for you and uh, dr gibran our first year student has came up here and i have been receiving many messages because recently in king edward medical university uh, there are many uh, new students that came up in hostel and uh, in nearby areas and texting me i have been receiving daily messages sir i have just uh, started my first year in kmu and uh, alamik bal and other colleges so tell me please guide me about usmle so this is answer for all Uh, these students okay so first of all i appreciate that okay many of your colleagues many of your senior will say oh uh, kuch nahi karna yaar chill karo tum to abhi first year mein aaye ho okay these will be the words but i appreciate all of the students who have just written this message and all are asking about that they are very passionate this passion drives you okay this passion is very important in usml journey money is a separate thing and passion is a second thing your passion will drive you from the first year till your match till your residency so keep up your and more power to you and for your answer so my answer will be first of all in two years understand yourself understand the system understand what is like stages sub stages what is anatomy what is biochemistry what is high yield in first two year understand the world what is high yield so my advice to all the first year student is that understand the first task is understand the world what is high yield and in these two year explore yourself okay okay what i can do what i can produce what is creativity in 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 me okay and uh, what i produce better and what is the surrounding what is this medical life okay uh, is, is is this fine usml is fine for me what is the lab you should understand what is mrcp you should understand what is fcps you should under, you should understand what is mds mdms are different pakistani exams so in two years you just make up your mind okay, which is best for you explore go to hospital uh, and talk to the usmle uh, like students talk to the lab students talk to the fcps mdms who are resident in pakistan explore the things explore the environment okay and get the idea of financial like expenditures and get the idea of the uh, like after your graduation what will be the problems because you are not familiar with these problems when you will be in final year or in after your graduation you will find these problem and you will be stunned oh it's like this it's like this so i request all of the first year and second year student first of all explore the journey explore yourself tell uh, your mother your father your sister your brother your family okay is this possible 
I am doing this journey. This is very like uh, very uh, like very very uh, like uh, difficult. For, uh, either it will be difficult or easy. Explore yourself, your family conditions, and then make up your mind. And after and you are passing this steps. Uh, yeah, you have uh, like a dedication, and then you have the passion, and you have the family acceptance, and then you go to the next step. Okay, next step is start the high yield way okay start the high yield way of learning anatomy biochemistry physiology in the first two years okay i repeat here understand the high yield i i am using the word high yield what you are teaching sorry what you are learning in your first two years okay it says mix up it is high yield and not high yield okay understand first high yield and then understand the physiology biochemistry and anatomy and immunology section also so immunology is in third year but physiology biochemistry and uh, like uh, and biochemistry anatomy and physiology these three subjects and then okay go to kaplan book series go to whatever other book series and go to the first aid grab the first aid and after for example you are uh, after the end of the first year all the topic of physiology biochemistry and anatomy go to the first aid and read that section don't go to other section okay read that section only after reading that section then you will get it oh i i know this i know this what is i listen the lectures if you want okay this is a way i think i will point out the four concepts for the first year second year students number one understand yourself understand what is college what is med school what are pros and cons what is irregularities in a doctor in pakistan what is the uh, benefits in usa uk australia uh, explore the examination structure explore expenditures and then uh, discuss with your parents with your families and make up a plan and understand the world what is high yield and understand the world after understanding this go to the preparatory resources and grab the first aid book and read the physiology biochemistry and art so this is the for all first year and second year students okay i think dr jibran it, it was very extensive for the first yeah, year was. yeah <laughs> i think you mentioned it all right yeah so if you yeah, want to time, add time, time, time. no no i second. think you you mentioned everything else uh yeah the times have okay. changed now so there used to be a time like uh, we don't used to worry that much. Uh, exactly. But the situation right now is it's that much. I uh, remember uh, we, were, we were discussing this uh, in the fourth year and now yeah. we're still yeah. first year. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> very, it's very, very like fast generation and uh, evolution is yeah. happening in parts. Evolution is happening in this peer. Actually, peer pressure is very important thing. Peer pressure is very I think there is positive peer pressure and negative peer pressure. Uh, I will I will be discussing in a separate video. I, I have in my mind to discuss the peer pressure. So it that positive peer pressure drives you. Positive pre peer pressure is very important for students because you are going every day to the college and then because you are seeing and surrounding your students are also going and interacting and discussing and learning. When you go to reading room, you will see the your classmate is learning and reading and you will go to also reading room and that is positive. This is called positive peer pressure. You are learning from the environment. You are putting yourself in the study. This is a good way. I think in MBB, MBBS, uh, I, I think at this stage, if I evaluate myself and evaluate the other student, this is positive drive was peer pressure, which is positive peer pressure. But many of students who have the negative peer pressure, when their classmates are starting the USMLE, oh, yaar, maine kyun nahi start kiya, yaar, mujhe bhi karna chahiye. Kisi ka U word ho jaye, emboss ho jaye, plan, yaar, uska to 10% ho chuka, mera to bhi maine start hi nahi kiya. Like these type of things is happen, we will discuss in a separate topic. So stay with us, and now our, uh, we will continue the question series. Our next question is, uh dr ahmed azim is uh, asking about step one attempt and old year of graduation can i match it i have a step one pass step two 250 scores and usc three months 
okay us clinical experience is three months and step one is pass and step two score is 250 so can you please tell dr gibran so what will be the future of this student or generalized you can tell about uh, all the other students who are watching they have the same situation of step one pass step two in 50s and usc clinical experience is three months thank you so i think uh, that's kind of overwearing yourself like uh, questioning your abilities uh, and questioning yourself at the same time that whether you're going to match or not and letting someone else decide i think you're going to decide about it i'm not the one going to say that you're going to match with this profile you're not going to match with this profile your score is oh you're not going to match or you didn't uh, you didn't get three months or five months of your clinical experience or you didn't get the like you're not going to match i'm not the here to decide about that i think it's you who going to decide what are the capabilities of your what are the things you're weak in and what are the things you need to work on and if you are working on yourself making yourself better every day even with the lesser much weaker profile this profile is a very good profile and very strong candidate for getting into the residency uh, i wouldn't say like it's a very bad candidate so it's one of the uh, one of the top candidates to get into residency but if 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 you're questioning yourself you're doubting yourself if you're not making correcting yourself if you're impro not improving yourself in that regard you're weak that the situation might be different then uh, you might have some uh, bad consequences but if you're working on yourself if you're improving yourself every day uh, then it will be entirely different and uh, what i would suggest to you to keep on making improvement in yourself answer like if you if something went wrong see uh, do the root cause analysis what things can can be avoided what things can be improved there's always room for improvement even today i i, I need a lot of improvement I, i'm not perfect nobody's perfect even with the with the highest score even with the 99 percentile you're not perfect you can make errors and you learn from them that's how it works the main thing is you learn from that if you if you're not learning from your mistakes and uh, you're keeping it all let go and you're overstressing yourself uh, the things will be different but it all depends on you it not depends uh, this is a very good profile to get met into a program even with the very uh, low score profile I've, I've seen people getting met into the residency so it all depends on you it's a very personal thing and i'm not the one we should be asked for the decision of it and neither should be anyone asked about it it's the one you should be answering yourself that's it okay thank you so much dr gibran uh, for this elaboration we will continue our uh, question answer series so our next question is uh, from the dr Mujassar Khan. Dr. Mujassar Khan is saying, uh, got it. Thank you. Thank you from Dr. Mujassar Khan. Dr. Gibran, thank you for you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next, is, next is from the Abdullah Asif. Dr. Abdullah Asif, what if I not match other options? Okay. <laughs> I have explained this. No, uh, I will tell you in step by step process. This is uh, for all the viewers who are watching at this time. This is very beautiful. I will be discover discussing all the options other than USMLE in my lab in video lectures, which is will be uploaded on this channel. So follow this. I will be uh, briefly describing other than USMLE, but the detailed explanation I will make a separate video. So this is the answer of Dr. Abdullah Asif. Uh, what if not match okay any students there is number one option after you are not matching go for Qatar if because Qatar is accepting USMLE step two in uh, two year back Qatar was uh, not having any requirement uh, for a specific Arabic language but nowadays Qatar is accepting uh, any person who know Arabic if you uh, have the done USMLE step one if you have done USMLE step two, if you have done with OET, if you have been certified with ECFMG, and now you are eligible to apply in Qatar residency, which is Hamad International Hospital. Okay, this is called Qatar residency. You can go to that. But there is there is many many other students who are applying. I have just get the knowledge and the 
uh, idea about that. The main issue is that they are preferring to all Middle East students who know the Arabic. Okay. The issue is that if you know the Arabic, you can go to Qatar if you are not opting for US Embassy. Qatar is very good option regarding the money, regarding your other, but regarding the your independence, regarding your standard, and like this is not like the US healthcare system, but regarding the money, it's it's okay. This is a one option. Second option after US MLE, if you are not matched, you can go and uh, apply for Australian Medical Council. Australian Medical Council accepts this USMLE scores and you will not need to do for AMC uh, like courses and you will not need to do the registration. And the same uh, like this, uh, in the previous years, uh, lab, uh, lab, lab exemption was present in the UK and uh, but nowadays, after exemption of the step two CS from the USA, UK is not accepting the applications. UK needs your U USMLE step three, as well as uh, USMLE step two clinical component, which is now not being, uh, not, it's not present. So CS, which is which previously called USMLE step two clinical skills, that was necessary to get the to get your GMC registration, which is called General Medical Council in UK. So you can go to Australia, you can go to UK, but nowadays there is no CS, so it is not possible at this time. But Australian is the best option. You can go, next option is UAE. Uh, UAE. Okay, you can go to United Arab Emirates, like they are accepting in, in Dubai, you can go, okay. You can go to other cities also they are accepting they have a different exam like mo exam hard exam dha exams these are different exams in the middle east okay so you can apply that they have the examination structure they have the like uh, mcqs exams and clinical exams like the usmle they have a separate system but there is one interesting thing that if you have done your usmle step three after USMLE step three, you are exempted from exams. Okay, so you can go to Middle East like UAE and uh, like other, mostly UAE in, in like you can go to any city, they have a different exams. Okay, specifically Abu Dhabi has a different exam name and uh, Dubai has a different exam name. So you can go and opt this if you have passed USMLE step three. The requirement in Dubai and Abu Dhabi is step three then you can exempt the uh, their requirements if you are just have passed step one step two and OET and certified then you can go and check their exam structure only you have to take the clinical exams of that okay so after passing their clinical exams there is also requirement of minimum one year after your house job after your house job you need a one year experience in Pakistan or uh, uh, recommendation is two year post uh, like MBBS or post house job two year experience is needed in Middle East. So you can go to in that area. Okay. And if you are uh, not going in all of these, you can start the lab. Okay. But at this time, uh, lab is already saturated. So you can also opt the Pakistan residency then FCPS and MDMS. Okay. So in summary, if you are not matched, first of all, I will recommend the best option is without wasting any time, go to Qatar, okay, and learn the Arabic language. This is number one. If you are not still, still satisfied, then go to Australia. If still not satisfied, apply for uh, your uh, Dubai exams exemption and go to Dubai, earn the money, and then apply again in a broader aspects in USA while doing a job in UAE and then you can uh, do a separate start from the lab journey. This is a very beautiful description of how a person can go if not able to match in US. I think this was very elaborative answer. Hope all the people have listened it and enjoy it. I think Dr. Gibran, it was anything if you want to add what are if person is not matching, so I explain all the exams. If you want to add anything, if person is not 
matching and i think the question maybe there is through two match after three match so what will be the scenario uh i think you explained it very well uh, uh okay, i think thank uh, you. yeah that that will summarize everything so okay thank you so much so we'll continue with the next lecture sorry sorry next uh, yeah. question uh next question is uh abdullah asif okay uh, next question is from the dr rk do the u world systematic or not okay you can do whatever you want doesn't matter okay if yeah. you are a fourth year uh, final year student you can start the systematic that is fine because your module system is happening you are learning slowly slowly step by step many fourth year and final year students start systematically that is very important point if you are graduate if have been already graduated you are just a free from early morning to the late till so you can do the random okay it is everything is relative i think i recommend if you are a graduate you are in a third year your fourth year and a final year go for systematic way and do the system i start with cardiovascular series or whatever but if you are a graduate and then start a random i think uh, i recommend this what's your idea dr jibran uh for me uh, doing the system wise is good i think uh, specifically for the step one for step two, you can dare to do it random. I would I would go for the random one because if you do the random one and you're doing almost the same question, you kind of making more interconnections between different oh, okay. specialties. Yeah, that's that's the main thing uh, that's gonna help you a lot. Uh, but uh, if if uh, in step one, you should I think you should start with system wise approach in the step one, and when you get a hold of it, like specifically when you're done with the first path, then do it random for sure. You don't need to do system wise again and when you're going for the step two ck i would advise you to go for the random because that's how you're going to be examined and that's how, so you're going to train yourself early from earlier in the step two uh, that uh, uh, that that's uh, going to define your score uh, in the exam as well and your strategy as well your thought process and your thought blocking process as well so going it random in the ck i think it would be the most preferable one also, it's more of a daring, but uh, it's uh, preferable from my standpoint of view. OK, thank you so much. So next, we will continue from a uh, question from Dr. Talha Daud. Dr. Talha Daud is asking, I am a first year student. Is there anything I need to do in first year for better? We have done it already. So we have answered it. So you can uh, uh, get this answer in our previous video section. So we have answered it completely. Next is uh, from Dr. 320 Muhaya. Sir, what is the new website name of ECFMG that you told? Yes, my Intel. M Y my I N T E A L T H. My Intel is a new system which has been developed, which is a replacement of ECFMG. You are all the account information, your certification your form 186 registration and all your account will be managed by the my intel it is a uh, usa you can say this is a usa uh, corporation or organization that will be dealing all the information related to international medical graduate i repeat it is a replacement of ec fmg from the january 2024 my intel will be dealing with it thank you Next, our question from Dr. Imran is, ye MLE kis country ke liye hota hai? Oh, excellent, Dr. Imran, the MLE is called, US MLE is a full name, US means United States, MLE is called Medical Licensing Examination. US MLE is called United States Medical Licensing Examination, it is exam for your certification to apply for residency for higher studies in US. This is your answer. Thank you, no problem. And uh, next, next is a question from Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan is asking, I am gonna start third year. Dr. Gibran, listen, I am gonna start third year and inshallah, and what should be my timeline? Uh, should I give my exam in my third year or in fourth year? 
depends. It depends on you. It depends on uh, you. Like uh, how how are you going? Uh, if you have like completed the uh, the U world in time, like in, within the third year, completed the U world, you're done with everything. You always uh, already done with the random U world, and you you done the one or two evaluation, and you pass them. Then take it in third year. Otherwise, go in the in the fourth year if you need to see there's there's very much improvement. You need to bring in your in your thought process, in your learning mechanisms, and in your knowledge base and your problem solving uh, strategies. Then you might might to consider doing it in the fourth year. But it all depends on you. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay, that's great. Actually, uh, I I wanted to add something. Uh, best technique is that uh, during your exams, like you are preparing for your stages, uh, sorry, your uh, test like in microbiology, pathology, and other the test. I think in this USMLE, all are the similar, okay? When you are preparing for, uh, like, let's suppose, microbiology, gram positive bacteria that is coming in your uh, test, which is usually on monthly basis in your, like, exam and, like, in your uh, tests which are conducted by your department in any college. So go far to prepare from high yield of that topic. Go to the first aid and first read before your test. Grab your knowledge and you will do all the things. Okay, You will be preparing for USMLE steps as well as you will be preparing for your uh, test also. So this is technique or strategy. You can use it or follow it. Okay. So in this way, you can not only will be able to take your test and also you will be preparing for your USMLE, but in uh, excellently in high yield way. Okay. So we will continue with the next uh, next question from Dr. Khan. Is there any checklist of the topics that are must to do to pass the step one? Or should I memorize the first aid book to cover? So the question Dr. Gibran is, is there anything other than the first aid? There any checklist or topics we should cover? Uh, I think the full first aid you should cover the whole first aid. Every topic is important. You can be asked from any uh, and any single line is every single line of the first aid is important. You cannot memorize it. You can only practice it. So if you practice it with the U word, you can memorize it. But if you haven't, if you're gonna memorize it, you're gonna forget it. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna forget it. Nobody is as good in memorizing stuff. Even with the people who have very good memory of memorizing all of it, you cannot do it. Uh, you need to practice it. So just like uh, it's like practicing, just like when you medicine is like practice as well. You're not gonna memorize every stuff. You need to practice the thing that you learn to get incorporated into your daily uh, way of dealing with the patients and. Uh, analyzing the all the data and labs everything so you need to practice it and you world is one of the best tools you can get for practicing it so going for the first aid alone is a very poor strategy i would say uh, and not going to give you any benefit at all so what i would suggest is uh, practicing it a lot with the u word not only with the u word but with also with the other question bank if you have the opportunity especially with the topics that are you are really weak in that you think you need more uh, work to uh, to put on on these topics. Uh, I think you should uh, be doing more question banks um, for that topic specifically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so right. much, Mr. Gibran. Right. We will continue next. Uh, so, question from the Dr. Khan is clear. And next question is from Dr. R K. Should we buy the U word? or do it from some websites or apps which give updated viewer by a reasonable price. Actually, there are many things uh, available in the market, which is copy variant and other all the uh, PDF variant. Whatever suits you best is best for you. OK, if you can find it to check it, if it is exactly same quality, same quality as uh, delivered by these apps or whatever the resources you are talking about. So if the quality is same, if the question is same, then you can opt it. If you cannot afford the U word, if you are not able to like purchase the U word or whatever, but uh, it's not. I we are not endorsing anything other than your best resources. 
but if any person who is not able to uh, like support like financially weak and he is doing some offline stuffs and other stuffs which is other than the recommended or high yield resources so please check it it must be the same quality as you need it okay so verify it first verify it first so come to our uh, like mentors come to text us we, we can guide you in this section so your preparation must be high yield okay thank you okay so our next uh, next question is from the uh, dr murtaza sajad dr murtaza sajad question is is a house job necessary we can skip the house job and get straight to usmle no house job is not necessary you do not need house job you can get the resi residency without even your house job because in usmle they are just asking about your degree if any college or any university or international university who is awarding the degree without your 12 month internship so called house job okay so it is not needed it is not needed okay when some of the exceptional cases is that like in international graduates from kazakhstan from china they have a policy here that they can only give you the degree when you complete 12 month internship or somewhat like this type of concept is here in international medical graduates so you can check it according to you either you are in pakistan or either in your in you are in a kazakhstan or in others so it is not needed generally if you are in pakistan you can just have the degree and then you can apply it okay the next question is dr marwan i graduated in 2018 right now doing my post graduation in pakistan dr jibran i want to do usmle but due to being an old graduate i feel reluctant to do kindly suggest is it what to start this journey now 2018 graduate i have started post graduation in pakistan 2018 mean 2 and 4 6 year gap he will be starting the journey it's mean it will take 2 year more so it will be total 6 year gap so do you recommend uh, to dr marwan for 6 year gap when he will be he will be applying and also the all requirement is completed dedication and steps and then doing all and financials and everything going smoothly from for the next two years and applying in 2016 2026 and now he will be six year old graduates what is your recommendation dr jibran i would say it is never too old to start your journey as long as you have the time uh, the things to fill in your gap you're already doing the post graduate so it's never it's never too late if you are really determined to do it it's all depend on your determination like if you're not determined like, like thinking it halfway like you're thinking about lab usmle all the stuff you want to do to give a shot to everything then it it's it will be a bad choice for you to study it uh, but uh, if you really want to do it only the usmle not the other things then you can start it and uh, because we have a, you have things to fill in your gap and uh, that would uh, that is really kind of self explanatory uh, so uh, i would say it's it's on your determination that how much determined are you to go that because that's the next effort you're going to put in and uh, with the time frame uh, i would i wouldn't say it's a bad choice i wouldn't say at all you have more experience clinical experience than the other applying in that uh, although you have a little bit less number of interviews compared to the uh, younger graduates but um, uh, but you have more clinical experience so you always we have something more to offer so i would say uh, you can it is not a, it's not a bad choice at all it's a good choice considering the uh, situation there in the in in our home homeland so i would say uh, yeah, you should go for it uh, don't overthink it just make a decision and go for it thank you and, so we will, uh, and we will thank you very much we will continue yeah. we will speed up our the question answer sessions so it is too late so i will be uh, just uh, continuing the sessions now the keyword for dr marwan is that keep it up there is nothing impossible in this world you can get it i have seen 
eight year old graduation students getting the match what you need to make connections this is a word you should remember it you should write it make connections make connections and make connections this is for you dr marwan thank you and dr khan i want to start my journey from scratch this is already has done dr khan guide step one complete uh, in the third year subjects uh, and pathoma micro should i go for the first aid start my journey in the first aid and along with the u word so dr khan fourth question is that what should i do i think you can find this answer in our previous video i have explained in detail what you should start and how you should start it first aid is the first book you should start from now and for the further guidance you can contact me you can whatsapp me on this platform of sims med prep i can answer you i can make a plan for you for the detailed discussion thank you next dr usama ali are there any best resources for learning how to do research on youtube and any other website can you guide about it so this is a research question we will be having a webinar on this research so the quick answer is that yes there are many resources you can find on youtube but i recommend personally go to coursera and udemy courses or some other a few of these websites they they are very uh, important and they have a free sessions here and in future we will be having sessions about the researches i will be inviting the uh, doctors from the america and uh, like the uk and they will be discussing and telling you what is the start of the research okay we will be uh, doing this inshallah in future so follow us and tell us what we should do your suggestions are very important text us in my whatsapp so i will be writing your these suggestions and i will be doing seminars about that okay so research will be discussed in the next seminars or webinars the so simple answer is that you can go to youtube you can go to uh, coursera medications and other uh, udemy and other courses so you, the free courses are available okay next question is the, from dr mujashar khan uh, if i am done with step one two and three uh, my steps are valid for seven years right yes. okay your steps are valid for uh, seven years, uh, but uh, your receiving your certification is going to get expired. So uh, what I would say is, uh, yeah, it all depends on your CMG certification. If it gets expired, you need to certify it by the ECMG again. You don't need to take steps again, but it is valid for seven years for sure. But you need to get certified because the certification these days, previously it used to get, you get certification for unlimited time. But now after the COVID, they have changed the policy. So you need to be get certified for like, uh, again, if your certification is expired, that's the answer for that. I hope it answered the question and we can move to the next question. Yes, obviously. Uh, um, next question is from Emma Dasan. I am in second year. How can I start? We have discussed this already. Oh, yeah, we discussed this question. Yeah. So you can go back and uh, listen to what is first year and second year guide. Next question Perfect. is from obviously that there are so many resources. How many should we use? And I started with bootcamp but kept missing out stuff in BNB. Uh, we have already discussed it. Uh, go to uh, extensive lecture series. BNB is only a simple high yield. Just a few of the concepts are covered. If you need extensive series, go for Dr. Najib lectures. If if you need more more extensive, then Dr. Najib is preferred. If you need less extensive, you can go to join our sessions fairly on Zoom meetings, and you can find any other on the YouTube. Okay, so Dr. Subhan Chavit. Uh, what's about the PMC accreditation by WFME? Okay. So, so I will answer this question. So PM, uh, PMC has already completed the World Federation of Medical Education. It's uh, one of the World Federation that makes sure your uh, medical graduates are, def are good to compete in the go around the world. They don't have any problem. They're kind of accredited by that. So most of the uh, most of the PMDC PMC, PMDC uh, accredited institution have already been accredited by the WFME. So you know, don't need to worry about it. I think PMC has already completed it. So yeah, we're good for that. So next question. Okay. So next question is that uh, are we supposed to do the whole U word? Uh, yes, you you're supposed to do the whole U word. And whether the, I think Ambos is one of the one that you should be looking for if you're weak in certain stuff and and also the RX, but uh, U word and Ambos is enough. Okay, thank you. So uh, next question, 
uh, uh, actually, uh, there will be in a five minutes, Dr. Gibran will be leaving and the question answer session will be led by Dr. Zawar and Dr. Umar. So I will be uh, requesting that the, the few of the question, we will answer it and uh, that are related to the Dr. Gibran. And then we will continue our series with Dr. Zawar Asif, who have just visited the more than seven state in USA. So he will be telling about what are the different question answer sessions uh, for uh, in USA. So I will be just making up for further five minutes with Dr. Gibran. I'm finding uh, uh, questions related to Dr. Gibran. Uh, let me find the specific answer. Uh, I want to start my USMLE journey. And Dr. Gibran, this question is for you from Dr. Shweb Aziz. So please stay with us. We will answer all the questions. We am, uh, I will be discussing a few, one or two questions with Dr. Gibran, and we will be leaving. And then we will continue our question answer session with Dr. Zwar also. Okay, Dr. Gibran, I want to start my USMLE journey. I graduated in 2015 now. Uh, is it possible after clearing USMLE, I may get? So there is a gap of yeah. eight years. No, yeah, I think. Yeah, it, it's, it's a problem, but uh, I've seen people doing it. I've seen people doing it even with 10 years of graduation, year of graduation. So uh, I'm again saying it's, it's all dependent on you. How determined are you? How much you want to sacrifice and uh, how much are you willing uh, to do? How much you are willing to pay the effort because it's very much extra effort and at that uh, year of graduation you're also kind of tired you know to have that much companion with you doing the same stuff uh, but you have more connections that can help you in the interviews and the more clinical experience so it's always uh it's always uh, you who can do it i think it's not a bad year of graduation nothing is bad in that scenario at all although i know sometimes uh, they prefer younger graduates but uh I think we already discussed a lot about this thing. Uh, you should just need to make a decision and uh, nothing is uh, too much old. Although it's going to be 10 years of graduation when you're going to be applying after two years. So, uh, but I've seen people matching in here with them with 10 plus year of, uh, year of graduation. So I hope that yeah. answers the question. So I will, I'll be leaving. Thank, Thank you very much guys for having me. Thank you so much Dr. Gibran for, having for your time. Yeah. So I am really, really thankful to you for this very, very valuable and informative session. So thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. So we will continuing the session with uh, Dr. Zwar right. also. Thank you. Bye bye, Dr. Gibran. Thank bye. you. Bye. Have a good night, you guys. All right. Take night. Care. Thank you. Yes, yeah. it's OK, fine. OK, yeah. so we will continue with a question of uh, from uh, that is Dr. Obviously dead. Okay, so doctor obviously that is saying what he is saying. Uh, there are so many resources. There are so many resources. How many should we use? I started with bootcamp, but but I kept missing. Okay, so uh, I would like to repeat this answer. I have already given this answer. So when you are using the resources, it's depend upon you. Okay, it's depend upon you. Okay, either which is best for you. If you are uh, undergraduate students, I will be recommending to start with a first aid. I start. I I will be recommending to start with a first aid, and then there must be uh, like after you are in graduation, and then you can start it. Uh, with the other lecture resources which is needed for your basic knowledge okay so you can understand that basic is very important in usmle step one the basic is covered basics is covered okay so you need the lectures if you already or if you already are undergraduate students it is a less likely you will need the basics so we have discussed it already so, okay, uh, so what about idea about Dr. Zwar for uh, resources in uh, this? Yes, hello everyone. I think that uh, Dr. Gibran and Dr. Kamran has discussed all the things. Dr. What's Zwar, important is... Are you here? Yes, 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 I am here. There Can you li listen to me? With Dr. Zwar, I will be continuing the answers, question-answer session now. So our next question from... 
Yes, I am here. Dr. Subhan Javed. What's about PMC? It's done already, obviously done. So next question is medical in abroad. Can I give step two before graduation? Of course, you can do the step two before graduation. But certification is necessary when you graduate. OK, so there are two processes that are important. One of them is that you should know about the you should know about the process of certification. OK, process of certification. If you are a student, OK, who has just passed the USMLE and step one, step two, taken the OET, you need a degree to get the certification. Okay, If you do not have the degree, it's mean you can pass USMLE step two, but your verification and your certification will be done when you get the degree after your final year medical exam. Is that clear? OK, so answer uh, for your specific doctor uh, that is yes you can do usmle step two okay you can do it no problem and uh, of course you can do it okay so our next is next question is from the shweb aziz dr shweb aziz I want to start my USMLE journey, but I graduated in 2000. We have already done it. Okay. Next is Usama Akram. From Usama Akram, the world is amazing. You are amazing people. And Dr. Usama Akram, you are amazing. Thank you so much for your appreciation. Next is Dr. Avas Mahmood. Dr. Avas Mahmood is saying, my university is not on the WFME actually he has misspelled WDOMs. Okay, that is in ineligible for ECFMG certification. What should I do? The answer is only Allah can, can do for this. Because your degree is verified in that country, in that state. So, okay, so uh, there is no option other than this. You can apply other than USMLE in UK or AMC or in Qatar, UAE, where there is not that type of WFME requirement. So you can search on Google. You will find the answer. So which is the I, I will be uh, fulfilling the requirement in other exams. So I will be suggesting don't waste on USMLE if your country is not eligible. So go to other exams. OK, so our next Dr. Mirwan is, is uh, saying that thank you so much, Dr. Gibran and Dr. Kamran. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mirwan, for your kind answer, kind appreciation. OK, thank you so much. Uh, next is Dr. Mahavir Suthar. He has deleted the message. No problem. Thank you, Dr. Mahavir Suthar. We are here for you. You can text us. If you don't want to post it here, you, you can text it. We will answer it. No problem. Welcome anytime. You will go and search my uh, WhatsApp is given in the Facebook or in the YouTube in this link. So you can WhatsApp me if you do not want to. So many of students who are very like uh, actively uh, wants to like ask the questions so they can send the question in my WhatsApp number. When I will be free, I will be answering it. OK. Uh, next is from Dr. Usama Akram. Will When will you start the classes of USMLE? If yes, please tell the time. OK, uh, I am uh, available and I have been starting this lecture from previous one month. I have completed my cardiovascular series. I teach from USMLE first aid book. I have the edited first aid book. I have added the different resources from UWorld, from embossed, from up to date, from the very, very high yield pool. And then I add it on the blank pages in the first aid. Then I teach in my own style, in my own different way. In this lecture, I cover not only the theory, but also the questions as well as the most important exam tips about that resources. OK. So I have completed a 17 lectures of cardiovascular series. And now we are discussing endocrinology. So tomorrow, Monday, we will be having from 8 PM to 9.30.
our online class anybody can join either we will be having this on zoom meeting or on youtube live okay so you can uh, visit our whatsapp group i have made a whatsapp group where i will be regularly uh, posting uh, the link of the zoom meeting it is a free link you can join at any time so i recommend dr usama akram and all the other doctors join our whatsapp group session so that you will be notified before the meeting and you you will be uh, get you will get this link on my whatsapp group okay so i hope dr usama akram you have find the answer and next question is dr avas mahmood dr avas mahmood uh, like the first batch from my college is not graduated i am still able to do the ac fmd registration i have to wait until the pioneer batch graduation as i have explained it already but i repeat here you can take usmle step 2 before your graduation but certification is very important for your certification there is a second backup plan is here go to your university and ask them they will give you a a, a degree letter certification letter there is a letter which is called degree letter okay so you can go and ask them before your actual graduation ceremony some of the colleges are not giving you the degree okay so they can give you a degree certificate or degree letter or degree awarding as diploma this is called degree awarding diploma okay there is actual degree i repeat here there is actual degree and there is called degree awarding diploma that diploma mention or that certificate mention that the student x is graduate of this this university and now is undergoing yes uh, he has taken the us uh, he has taken the final exams because of course they will mention it that he has done his clinical exams which is final year exams or internship or uh, he will they will mention that they have the completed and then the degree will be awarded at some later time okay so this person is eligible now so this is called diploma letter or degree certificate so you can get this from your medical college okay you can go to the section admin section and ask them i need to certify if this is applicable give me the letter usually usually this happens for your usml step 2 exam uh, when you upload this degree certificate or you are during your certification some of the colleges have a uh, account which is called ecfmg or now it is called my intel portal which is managed by a, a college or university department they automatically ver verify the status but sometime degree diploma is required for your certification it if so there is a difference of degree and diploma or it is called degree awarding certificate so you can get degree awarding certificate and get your self registration okay thank you okay next question is that dr mahavir sutar do the scores matter more than usc in getting interviews okay so it is actually a relative question i will answer briefly scores scores and usc they have both have the impact let's suppose this is x program this is y program x program is saying that i have a filter in my algorithms when i will be receiving more than 200 application 300 application 400 application and i have a spot just two people okay two people to hire in my hospital so the program will program will apply the filter what are the filters filters are score filters usc filters USML, usml step 3 filter which and there are some other filter which is called connection filter okay i just it is i am joking there is also a filter that is called connectivity or you can say it recommendation the word recommendation is used usually in us system or in other healthcare system okay so there are filters when the program receives many of the applications like bunch of application i have just told you in hundred in thousands of application thousands of applications so they have a filter here okay they will filter it like uh, minimum usml step score 240 
does know it's pass fail so they will not give the filter of usml step one they will select the filter of usml step two they will select usml step one filter this usml step two filter is 250 240 usually they take 240 or 230 240 230 is the like sometime higher program or much like well established program used 240 to uh, 250 to 6 to 55 up to 255 many of the program are using 260 even okay but majority of the program use 220 okay the baseline or minimum value of your score is 220 220 is the filter on the website which is uh, residency explorer website they have mentioned that there is 220 minimum requirement by many of the programs so when you got the filter let's suppose any program select the filter 250 it means score are mattering scores matters okay when you are not in filter less than 250 of course you are filtered out you are filtered out no one can get the entry otherwise you have the four that fourth concept is recommendation okay next is usc some of the of course many of the hospitals have filter up clinical experience minimum two months some have minimum one month usually one month clinical experience is accepted but three later they are demanded okay so at least three months or uh, you can say it is a 12 week experience in us healthcare system or any healthcare system okay that when you are applying for match they are required three months experience required okay so some program take a filter of two months some may be having accepting a one month and well but the three letter you have to upload on when you are applying for the match in these three letter you can upload a one letter from your college or dean you can upload the other from your uh, us experiences so in overall when i answer this question of uh, uh, dr mahavir so answer in simple answer will be simple answer will be score and your clinical experience both matters but above all this your recommendation matters the most okay the score and us clinical experience matter okay but recommendation if available it can conceal it can hide your low scores it can hide your low clinical experience if i will say if a recommendation is present and your scores are low you are more likely to have the interview call if your clinical experience is not available and even you still have the recommendation and a less likely chance so it's mean clinical experience is important for your uh, getting the interviews because the recommendation only works when you have the when you have the us clinical experiences is that clear so get the us clinical experience and improve your scores but now score is limitation like 240 plus is okay not not so much important and improve your further cv okay do not go for blindly on scoring system i i will take the 270 nothing important get 240 or plus and improve yourself your communication skills your your clinical experiences and your connections and your recommendations so this is a simple overview of the answer of doctor uh Mahir. okay our next is uh dr ziaullah ziaullah question uh, if i do my electives in pakistan will they be considered okay will they be considered actually when you are uploading they demand three letters but you are uploading it is depending upon the program director when he will be receiving your pdf form or like your letter form okay when the program director will be seeing this or oh, this is from pakistani college or pakistani hospital he will not give importance to that so in general the question on uh, the, the answer is that no pakistani letters are not recommended not recommended unless unless you are unable to go USA, 
and you want to apply without going to USA because you, without you going to USA, you cannot take the uh, like uh, observership letters. It is illegal, of course. And uh, because when you will go and you will prove that you have the visa and then you get the observership. But something is better than nothing if you want to apply without going USA, without uh, doing observership, then you can went any good hospital in pakistan and my preference go to mds who have just passed the steps who have who are many mds are available in pakistan who have just left the usa working in pakistan and get the letter from that people okay this is very important point don't get the letter from a simple doctor either he is professor either he is a chief of uh, like hospital either he is the uh, like health minister doesn't matter in USA care system if there is minor contribution that is MD okay so find out in your surrounding who is US MD and opting are uh, there are many many available doctors in the whole you will find it on Ola Doc and other other channels in maram.pk and very very other and you can find them meet them and ask them if they can allow you, they can do the job here uh, and do the work under supervision of these MDs and get the letter if you are not able to go to USA. So this is a simple answer of uh, Dr. Ziaullah. So Dr. Ziaullah, I hope you get your answer. Okay, our next question is Dr. Arslan Push. Okay, Dr. Arslan, how to begin step one preparation? Uh, Okay, step one preparation. I have explained it already. I will revise it quickly in a summarized in a summarized way. Step one, you just start from the first aid book. Grab your first aid book and a highlighter and your notebook. Start with this first aid book. Okay, when you will be reading the first aid, you will need a, a energy, a driving force. Next, my strategy: get the driving force. What is driving force? That is your motivation. That is your surrounding. Okay. Familiarize yourself with USMLE oriented surroundings. Grab the book. Go to reading room. Go to your group of students who are uh, studying. Go to USMLE aspirants. Sit with them and then start study. Because automatically when you will sit in the environment of this USMLE and you will be learning passively as well as from this passive learning you will get the active response this is my second best technique first make up mind okay tell the parents and explore the usmle journey make up the plan grab the first aid go to the surrounding environments where usmle parents are present start the journey listen our lectures daily okay uh, text us on whatsapp you can join on zoom or meetings daily okay we are covering endocrinology sections so this is a bunch of high yield things i am discussing i can guarantee this is no more than the beautiful lecture other than my lecture you will listen it on my youtube channel i have made many good illustrations after this first aid series i make sketches i have histology i have the uh, like different uh, uh, like ct scans available in just one topic okay when we are let's suppose discussing about pericarditis i will grab all the different types of pericarditis and all the pictures and the symptoms and all the things in one let's suppose we are discussing in endocrinology there is a different type of hashimoto thyroiditis what is histology so i will upload this picture in my book in, in my extra edited pages and i will i will teach you and tell you what is this picture and what is this picture so this is my way so you can join it you can enjoy it okay so further i will guide it in my whatsapp group you can join it slowly and also we will be doing question answer sessions daily in my youtube channel you can uh, subscribe it i will be uploading many many of the videos related to usmle lab mrcp so stay with us okay thank you next is dr uzair gabol uh next question is dr Sushma, Dr. Sushma, how to join the WhatsApp? Go to description of this online session. You will find my WhatsApp number. You, you, 
text here and you will get my whatsapp group link here okay go to description of this webinar and you will be finding my whatsapp number text here and you will find up all all your answers okay so next uh, is the rk where i get the eligible you word there is okay there is many many other uh, like resources you can get it you can find it okay so i have already explained it here next is dr uzair gabol my intel app is postponed i applied for registration in 15 december 2023 but there is no response what should i do i have been receiving this response from many of students stay okay calm and okay there is no need to worry about that ecfmg and the uh, my intel have explained it on their website that you have students who applied in december are pending and we will resume their application one my intel full shifting will be done okay so there is no issue and already there is accreditation has been done with pakistan so no issue with that so you can wait it until they have uh, completed the my intel accreditation process and they have uh, 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 when they will complete the update of this my intel and then they will resume your application okay is that clear and thank you so much so here is the end of our webinar okay so i have explained all the things answer and question session and then uh, we have discussed about all the steps related to the from your usml step 1 journey till your residency okay so we have explained what are usml step 1 we have explained what are study resources for usml step 1 we have discussed the what are the exams techniques and we have discussed usml step 2 and we have discussed the usml step 2 resources and then we discussed the registration process and after that we have discussed the most important part of our seminar was total usml expenditures and in this expenditures we have discussed about almost 40 to 45 lakhs so remember 40 to 45 lakh is it can vary depending upon your condition it may be 35 lakh it may be 50 lakhs it depending upon whether you are going in which state your observership are free or your observership are paid it's depending upon that condition okay so next we discuss about the visa related issues we will be having a visa seminar soon and then we have discuss about the uh, the flights and residence in usa and air tickets what are the different points about that and then we have discuss about usml step 3 in this usml step 3 what are the techniques and we have discuss the what are the problem you can face during your residence in usa while you are doing observership as observership and usml step 3 is a difficult to do at the same time and uh, next we have discuss about the uh, like match process so how to apply the match process what are the fees and what are the different techniques dr gibran has discussed it very beautifully and then we have discuss about the uh, resources and and the last we have discuss about your own pathway to residency and now it is the end of the session we have discussed many of the question and their answers so if you have any questions any questions still uh, we are not like able to de describe here you can whatsapp us and you can follow us on zoom you can follow us on youtube you can follow us on the facebook so stay with us thank you for all joining here so i will be very happy i will be very happy if you can go to tell your colleagues your seniors your juniors and tell about this platform sims med prep platform okay so this is very very beautiful so i we will be having many of the sessions and one of the most important session will be one of the most important sessions of these will be the usml step sessions in this usml step sessions we will be having a daily first aid book series and this first aid book series we will cover the high yield way uh, what are the different techniques exams and all the preparations 
and we are also having the lab session mrcp okay mrcp section is available and we can have the uh, first aid series that can cover fcps part one this first aid series can cover the mdms and also the need pg for indian students and also for nre national registration examination that is for foreign medical graduates so this first aid lecture is super high yield and very important okay so you can get it so you can get in this uh, first aid series and uh, so after this first aid series mrcp section is available in mrcp section we are having our own notes i create and collect from different notes and i uh, teach uh, from the our own created notes so you can find this in our videos okay so i have uh, like all the other systems available in next we will be having the usmle webinars and we will be having uh, lab webinars and we will be having the uh, other like most important webinars will be visa related issues we will be inviting other resident from the usa and after that we will be uh, inviting most of the other like mrcp resident from the uk we will be inviting australian medical counsel resident here that can give you the more impactful uh, guide here so thank you so much uh, stay with us and follow our all the social media handles so we will be discussing more about all these exams thank you so much dr kamran signing off thank you